What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'll be your host today. I'm Nick Scarpino, just in case you couldn't tell by the tone and the timbre of my voice. Uh, Greg is off uh, in Vegas doing the Dice Awards with one Jessica Chobot, so we're very, very excited for him. Uh, so I'll be carrying you through this mystical journey alongside uh, Blazing Blessing Jr. This table. This. I'm going to get to that in a second, bro. Oh, okay. Might no. early? Have you not really? been on this? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't happen until 45 minutes into the show. Oh. Most of the time. Hi, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to his right is uh, well, the best co-host a man could ask for, Mr. Andy Cortez. Thank you, Nick. Very nice and to back you. from the dead, back from the Navy, Blind Fury himself. Navy blue eyes, oh. Tim Gale. Oh, Navy, Tim Gale. Hey, oh, fuck wow. Navy. You gave me cobalt before the show was going. I like cobalt a lot better. Cobalt blue is the coolest blue, but it's, it's also, like, it reminds me of like the early 2000 blues. Yeah. When like cobalt was in. My car's cobalt blue. Is it cobalt blue? No Yeah, yeah your car looks it's like it's from 2000. Yeah. I don't think I know what cobalt is. I think co- I see cobalt Barrett, can you Google like cobalt and just see what comes up? Because my brain goes to like a charcoal. I think of like no. a. Na- I think of like. A- oh like, that's wow. Cobalt, wow! Right there. Yeah. That's definitely not charcoal. Nah, then you're definitely not cobalt, Nick. Cobalt, dude. I mean, is- I should have said like gunmetal gray blue. Okay, here's Gettys. the confusing thing. Like I've looked up cobalt, but there's all these different shades of blue. That's the thing, man. Up. Fifty shades of blue. It's Gun- that for story. sure. That for sure is not cobalt. The one on the smackdown in the middle. It's more gray like blue teal. Gettys. Yeah. Uh, there's like no tur- turquoise consistency or constants in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say for our sponsors, uh, Hymns, Butcher Box, and the Besties over on Spotify. It's true. They are our rock. Thank you so much for bringing you this show. We appreciate you. And also, thank you to our Patreon producers this month. All of you who came out last month to support our crazy, wacky dreams of getting a new studio so and, uh, so and uh, hiring uh, Blessing and uh, maybe firing Andy. We don't know. Uh, James Davis, are we do- you want to do it together with me? Sure. Let's do it. Ready? Uh-huh. All right. James UC Davis. David the Mind Freak Mind Tell. The greatest of all time, Muhammad Muhammad. Uh Justin uh Toff Soft I, I made a soft rhyme last time. Keep going, keep going. Uh, Dr- uh, Drew Garnier Fruit Tees. My hair is soft. Kent Loonblad the Bad Man. James UC Hastings. <laughs> <laughs> uh Dameron Cameron Regan. Uh Mark the Free Man Freeman. Alex J. Sandoval Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Shazam Batson <laughs> Andrew Feisner David Go Fishing Holbrook Seth Myers Ginger uh, Yes Steve Rogers yes. Powers Ali Haji Tanner Kirby I the Cat I just read that one <laughs> Ray Burt Q Burt Ray Romano Samuel Adams Aldersey Anthony Esquivel Charlton John you're not gonna take my guns Alvarenga Al- 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 Wait what's that a reference Charlton to? Heston Oh, You'll okay. take them out of my cold, dead Mel- hand. Melissa without a Y. Oh, Melissa with a Y. With a Y is what I meant to say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Parker, let's have a nice lunch out by the grass luncheon box. <laughs> Looking back. <laughs> Looking back. <laughs> 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 Daniel Arroyo, MTV Raps. Keith Lewis. Richard Abraham, son and father. Oh, Karen and O'Donnell. Lee... Lee, <laughs> General Lee. There it is. There uh, it is. Uh, the mini biologist. Oh, Nano, because of Nano. I, I fucking see. crushed that. Frank, <laughs> Frank Furter, the man with too many hot dogs. Shaun of the Dead, Valoric. Andrew Cortez. And finally, Quaid, <laughs> start the reactor, Burnett. You guys are all wow. amazing, and you are our Patreon all. producers man. for this show. You of course, paid wow. for that. if you want to be a part of this show going forward, don't. Nah, I'm kidding. Go over to patreon.com slash kind of funny where you can back us at one dollar. You can give us one dollar if you want. Or if you want to back us at the bronze tier, you get to be a part of the show later when I read some amazing Patreon questions. Is one of them about what we would do if we had to have sex with each other, gun against our head? No. <laughs> it's not. But you submitted it. <laughs> but you, someone submitted that one. And I, and I read it and I laughed. And I, looked at that. T- and I read it to Tim and Tim said, no, we're not going to talk about that today. No. And here's the thing. Yeah. We would. If there was a different member of this this team that wasn't here, you think it was Greg? Yeah, if Greg was here, uh, Greg, and, there and are no you, you boundaries whatsoever. You know, <laughs> it might be okay. I you just think, can't trust you. You think me and Greg would push, push it over to the edge together? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel that on that one. Yeah. I feel it on that. One. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, this is the kind of funny podcast where each and every week, three, sometimes four, best friends gather around this, this table. table. Are we not? Do we not say it together? Oh wait, no, no I'm thinking of a different show. What show you no, think? We... No, this is the only show. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> is this not the game we're Greg show? 
Uh, it used to be the Game Over Radio but Show. But we don't now say, it's the we kind of say this table. table. Unless Greg's hosting and he's, oh, he's had some of that recap fake juice. fake fan-ass bullshit. You know Listen, you I'm going to be honest. Jesus. I never listened to a kind of funny podcast before I worked here. <laughs> How I did you tell. get hired here? <laughs> <laughs> who are you? What are you, like the me of people who want to work here? I'm a big GameSpot fan. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, GameSpot. Really good outlet. Yeah. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we do this podcast every week here. Uh, kind of funny. I would go through the rigmarole when it posts, but let you all know I just don't know. So it's at some point, maybe Wednesday. I'm not going to I'm not gonna mask is it Wednesdays <laughs> that it goes up, Tim? Give him the rigmarole. Uh, yeah. Cool. Wednesdays it goes the live. The day after we record. Uh, you is can watch our it live Tuesdays. We can watch it live Tuesdays. We have some fun uh, each year. Some, we bring topics. You guys bring topics. And of course, uh, if you like this, please <laughs> feel free to uh, subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash kind of funny. We love those subscribers. And of course, if you're listening to podcast services, we're everywhere. Um, do, I don't do around the globe, okay? I'm just about this continent of the United States. If you're listening outside, <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Give us a nice rating. Uh, check us out. And go over to roosterteeth.com and check out our content there. We put all of that stuff over there, too. Does Jeff like it? He doesn't know we do it. There this we go. True. True. Sure. Chris no Angel's idea. coming to San Francisco in a couple of weeks. Oh, my Wait, God. Really? I thought you said you were going to say he was coming on this podcast. No. Are we going to do it? We, cool we, we have cool friends with he Chris Angel. He just Angel. Mid- episode. <laughs> Floats away. We do it. Yeah. We leave the chair empty. Uh-huh. We interview him like he's there the whole time. And then when people go, Where was he? We go, He's just that good. Mm-hmm. He's, he's just that good. <laughs> yeah. We we go we like turn the camera, it's all mirrors, he's gone. He or it's it's audio, mostly an audio only podcast, but he does magic tricks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we I can't like see it. it. I like it. Whoa, it's just <laughs> quiet. Whoa. <laughs> we often talk about how Greg could interview a rock and it would still be fascinating content because yeah. he's an insane person. But like I want to see what a Nick Scarpino podcast looks like when he has to fill an hour. That's just oh, I can show you exactly what it looks like. Go Google Nick and Tim interview Tony Hawk. Yeah. It yeah, the painful. longest 20 minutes of our life. Five minutes in, Tim and I are like, I was like legitimately like, should I start asking Tim questions? <laughs> I've never been more embarrassed in my life. I'm uh, just sitting here, the, the fucking legend, and then and here's Nick just fucking sh- crashing the ship <laughs> as strong as possible. You man. gotta sink before you can swim, Andy. Sure. You gotta sink No sailor swim, ever man. learned anything in calm seas. God. It's a fact. That's you hear about insane. this cool, Greg? Well, long story short, is Nick tried telling Tony Hawk he needs to do more yoga. <laughs> I said it's very restorative. And he was like, I he was agree. Like, He's like, to the yeah, next topic, I'm a please. fucking athlete. I know yeah. how to take care of my body. He was giving me nothing, and it's his fault. And <laughs> between him and Andy Circus, they can both fight for a spot in hell. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you guys remember? This is going to be a weird poll. But do you remember when David Copperfield made the, uh, I think it was him, he made the uh, uh, Statue of Liberty disappear? Wait, what? Did you ever see this? I don't remember. I feel like I would have heard about this. Do you guys not remember this from the 80s? I might have totally made this up. Can you Google this? Can you Google David Copperfield? This seems like an ABC special. of Liberty disappear. I think it was an ABC special. Like They're like, they did a countdown. They were like, in two hours, he'll make it disappear and reappear. That sounds like a threat. Vanishes. (laughs) Here we are right here. And I think he did it with like a big mirror. I can't remember how he did it. it Yeah, this is the shit we did in the 80s. We didn't know. We didn't know what to do. We didn't know. So they put a big ass screen up above it. There it is. What in the world? Ready? That's got to be a huge ass screen. It's big. And look at that jacket, Tim. Are you I jealous? Love it. Yeah. Are you jealous of that? Or Ladies maybe man. it's only the angle that, like, <laughs> look at this fuck. Maybe it didn't need to go that high. Maybe it's just like the angle that we're looking at it from. Mm. It fully envelops it. You know. He's using his mind freaks waves. Oh my god. His mind waves. Magicians. I think I've just decided I don't like magicians. I've had holy shit, guys! Holy what? motherfuck! <laughs> it's not there anymore. Mother it's of God! Definitely not there anymore. <gasps> Whoa! Right. <laughs> it's just from this one angle, by the way. Yeah. They didn't show you any other angles. It's very obvious. Oh, but there's a helicopter back there, guys. Where did it go? Oh wow, okay, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> it's it's just that angle. No, it's actually <laughs> three hundred. That means it's gone. Around it. That's very. You don't impressive. see Wolverine there. No. I've, now you're fully just like actually interested. Like, wow, this is a good job. <laughs> like, well, how'd they do that? <laughs> good job by D-Cop. That was actually pretty amazing. Yeah, that was really cool. God, uh, God that's scary. It's so different, man. It's so yeah. weird seeing people like just dress differently and look different. Like, there's uh, that one comic, Private Eye, where it had the character mm-hmm. that was like the old man. And it was like, it takes place in the future. So it takes place good, in, really like, good comic. Like, I don't, I'm just going to say like 2060 or sure. something like that. And there's this old man that's like a grandpa, but he's just tatted up everywhere oh and it's God. just like that's gonna be our future like think, it's just weird to think that like yeah. the kids with face tats now are gonna be grandpas with face tats then i think i think about it often where like toward like 2007 2008 there was a strong idea of what the 90s were right like i could identify 90s fashion and 90s style but like right now we're in 2020 i couldn't really put a pin on like what is the early 2000s 
right? 2000 to 2010. Oh, the early 2000s? Like 2000 Dude. to 2010, yeah, specifically. Yes, you could. Boot real, jeans. Real, real baggy ass jeans. Like, I guess, yeah, baggy a stuff. A lot of matching colors. White uh, tees. I know what, what you're, I know to you're trying to say, though. Like, yeah. It's hard, to, it's hard to sort of say what is right now's fashion. Like right now or early because 2000s? Because it doesn't seem Well, like... I'm talking about 2000 to 2010. Oh, got it. So got 2000 to 2010 okay. was marked by very, like to me, it was marked by like designer, true religion, boot cut jeans, those ornate, I mean, the Ben Sherman shirts. Do me a like, favor, Barrett. Google too fast, too furious. Yeah. Use the numbers mm. two okay, that's when, you, when that, you Google it. Can you please Google Britney and Justin in all denim outfit? Totally. The only that's very, the kind of it's a very shit similar that vibe. Me. The rapper I want, Cameron I want a comes shot for some reason. of the four, the main four from Too Fast, Too Furious with Suki. Because when it's Suki and and the rest of them, what happened to Suki? I don't know. Where's she at? Why the fuck did they not? They brought everyone. They brought Han back from the fucking dead. They Multiple can't bring times Suki this back from Miami. Yeah. See, this this is early 2000s. That's yeah. early 2000s right there. Yeah. There we go. Same uh, to be fair, Paul Walker rocked that look always. Yeah, he always rocked that. That's just, a timeless look, man. He's, I, I like it, man. But like, yeah, the low, early two thousands were were very much about that 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 jean that women wore that was right above their pelvic like mm-hmm. fun mm-hmm. area thrust bucket. It was all it was about the the panties that came up a little. You know, when they leaned over, you always saw oh, the yeah. whale tail. The whale tail. Yeah. Manny from Degrassi. Yeah. Um, there yeah. We go. yeah. Never forget. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> I feel like now the styles are a little bit more eighties. I feel like now? we've gone back to a retro 80s style. God, well, look at this. Yeah. yeah oh, my God. What a That's moment. That's the best. Can I believe free it Britney, together, everyone. I Let her out. Like Let her run her out. God. I feel like there's any, like, if we do want a grasp on what that uh, sort of fashion was, just look for any red carpet uh, premiere in, like, 2002, 2001. I mean, look at Cisco from when he was, like, at the Grammys where you're like, this is insane. The fashion This are- is insane. You're wearing plastic. He wasn't. He, it was not the one where he wore like just the vest, the red vest, or the white. I think all white. Or maybe I mean, that's he, a video. Cisco's had some looks. Cisco, can you can you pop some Cisco? I, I guess type Cisco award show. Yeah, I guess like VM. Oh, it's with the S and a Q. I uh, uh, just put dragon, please. <laughs> <laughs> just dragon <laughs> smog. Yes. <laughs> God bless him. Yeah, see, that's what I was. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, that's hot. That shit, but see, you could still wear that today, and it would still. (laughs) If you're Cisco, at at the VMAs, I feel like you. If you're Cisco at at the VMAs, you could look like however you want. Because remember how when Lady Gaga wore meat? Yeah. Yes, I do remember that. Yeah, that was that was a look. We haven't seen meat ever since. (laughs) (laughs) No, yeah. That's what started the decline of meat (laughs) in America. (laughs) That's what. uh, Pull this up one more time. Look at our boy. That's what Look at our boy from. hanging out with, with fucking Beyonce. Beyonce. Man. <laughs> like, Look we know him. him. He know. might be listening to this. That's this crazy. <laughs> Cisco, if you're listening to this, man, I hope you're well. Because <laughs> we well. love you very, very much. You, you got to come remember back. Remember when we had him sing the Pokemon out. theme song? Oh, God, I do remember that. Remember? <laughs> yeah. There's lots. We've had lots of. Let's put it this way. Never had a bad interaction with Cisco. Hell yeah. Can't say the same about Andy Serkis. He Jesus. knows. He knows it's a joke. Right? <laughs> Who Andy Serkis? Yeah, I'm just never had an interaction with him. Talked to Greg. <laughs> so, did he talk to oh, him? Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. That's yeah. what he was. He's just because he's too much of a fucking coward to come on our show. Is what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, what if he, really what gonna... if he listens to this? What will you think? Uh, who? Uh, Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis. No way. The man he's listening legend. To this. No. It's a long. But time I think he's Andy also... Serkis friends with Henry Winkler. It's yeah. all connected. Here's you got winks because of you. I did get winked. He did. He fucking winked me. And now this kind of is gonna just disregard what I say next. But it's a long con with Andy Serkis, right? I'm negging him. You know what I mean? I'm just throwing out those negative vibes right there to make him want me more. He's so really that when he comes on here, yeah. I get to be one of the fucking Alphas. dawn of the dawn of the planet of the apes. You see what I'm saying? What? Oh, oh. <laughs> God, here we go again. <laughs> It's not hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I would put some lo- fucking oh knee, put some fucking knee braces on. I would oh, love oh. to see Nick try to do two hours of of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and just see what your mood is, gauge your mood afterwards. Hour and in. see how done you're with it. Hour and even. I'm um, fucking even. Yeah. Feel. Hour one minute in. <laughs> I, I, this is a terrible mistake. Everyone shit at their job. I could do everyone on this fucking set's job better than them. Two hours in, I'm everyone's best friend. It was a good shoot. See you guys tomorrow. No, but there's ten more hours of the day because it's a long day. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm off my hook. <laughs> I don't have to stand like this for one that. <laughs> no. What do you think is harder? You think doing that, or do you, or you think doing uh. Uh, Tim Gunn doing Rocket, like having to be like that low the whole time. I feel like Rocket would be harder. I mean, both sound like I, I think huh? exactly. That's I th- why Tim Gunn is more important in the world than fucking Andy Serkis. <laughs> no, I think watching uh, Andy Serkis do uh, Gollum looks like a pain in the ass because you're just always like he's overacting. You're always mm-hmm. 
God, <laughs> that was that was good though. That was real good, Nick. You got, you got in there. So useless. <laughs> uh, I know, I know. Tim, I want to talk about your eyes, but before I do that, I want to tell you guys the weird interaction I had with a magician. Can I lay this on you? Wait. I, you, you, first off, you, well, you could have done that. Yeah, Second off, though, <laughs> you had so many segues, so many segues. Like the whole us watching the Statue of Liberty. Disappear. That's what I was getting to. But somebody Got interrupted it. me. I'm not going to point fingers, but somebody randomly said, "What are the styles like in early 2000s?" <laughs> I was like, first off, we were talking about 80s magicians. I was going to segue over to this amazing story I have. We we're talking about you don't remember. We we're, were talking about, about 80s because yeah, we're talking you were born decades. three years ago. You don't understand anything that saying. happened in American history from fucking 19, 2016 or before. Tell me about um, your magician. So my buddy goes, hey, I want to I want to start running a room, uh, a co comedy room, like maybe doing like a comedy, a professional comedy show in San Francisco. And I got this great place, but I want you to come check it out with me. We'll go. We'll hang out. We'll have a cocktail at the bar above. And then we'll go downstairs and, and check it out. And I was like, oh, that's cool. But can we just go straight there? He goes, no, because currently in this space and this is this amazing, like speakeasy space down below a Moroccan restaurant in San Francisco, like Otto O'Farrell kind of a dangerous area but perfect for comedy he goes but in the space right now is a magician but the reason why i'm exactly it, it's okay. already funny because the reason i'm talking to these guys because the magician's been we can't so get him out he's been, <laughs> <laughs> they go, trapped they go, <laughs> the trick went wrong so they go they go they go this guy's he's getting successful so he's 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 hinted at wanting to get a bigger space but he won't leave so like he goes, we want comedy because comedy means that a lot of comedians can come in here and do multiple shows every week. That's more fun. The magician's renting it out, and he just want he doesn't want anyone in his space because he's I guess scared they're gonna like fuck up his shit or steal his stuff. I don't know. So we get there, and the guy's like, uh, "Hang out, guys. I'm gonna get you guys some food." He's down there still, but I don't know when he's gonna leave. But I'll check in with him, and when he leaves, we'll go down and look at the space. He goes, I don't want to be rude to him because I think he's maybe rehearsing or something like that. I'm like, I'm a professional. Clearly, I'm a performer also. One performer, another performer. I get I get jacked up too when people come in. And when, I, when we're rehearsing KFAF, if anyone interrupts that, I get fucking hot. Yeah. Because it has to, the show has to Christian be perfect. Bale, yeah, yeah. The show has to be perfect. <laughs> you never work in this town again. Are you fucking moving lights? Do you move with lights around? Why do I sound like Larry David? It doesn't matter. <laughs> so we God. go. We hang out for like 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I walk. I, and I was with my buddy Austin. And he was like, I'm going to go check in with him and just tell him, like, we'll come back at a different time because we don't want to interrupt this guy. So like, hey, man, thank you so much. Pay for the food. And he's like, you don't have to. He was really, really sweet. Um, but I was like, well, we'll leave you a little money. We're going we're gonna to come back a little bit later in the week. And he goes, no, 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 no. I'll tell you what. Let's just go down there right now. I'm sure the magician will be cool with it. You guys can see the space. You can get a feel for it. And then later, if it works out that he ends up leaving, of course, we're not trying to push out. I'm not trying to muscle any magi magi uh, magicians here, right? I'm not trying to do that. You shouldn't. Yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. And, and so I go, and I see the picture of this guy, and he looks like what you would think a magician looks like, right? <laughs> Which is what, Nick? What do you think he looks like? Uh, okay, okay. He's a real skinny white guy. There you go. Yeah. Nailed it. Fucking nailed it. Goatee or no goatee? Goatee. Goatee. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Goatee. Uh, fedora or Soul no patch. fedora? Oh fedora. my god. Okay. There we go. Definitely fedora. Long hair that can be pulled back into a ponytail or yes. no long hair that can be pulled into a ponytail? <laughs> wow. This is real visual. Exactly right. So I see a picture of this guy. I'm like, this guy fucking has it, right? I go down into his face. <laughs> Because <laughs> like I just asked you, what does a magician look like? And you guys named him. He's yeah. So it. he's fucking destroying the magician game, he's right? He's got it. Yeah. I go down into a space, and it's this beautiful, beautiful, like, I want to say 1920s, like, or pre, speakeasy style, ornate, like, walls, ornate ceiling. You know how they used to actually, when they used to give, give a fuck before now, when they're like, we just get the thing up as fast as possible because real estate's at a market. Anyway, I go in. He's got this place decked out with, like, all these cool posters of, like, Houdini and all these, like, and, like, uh, uh, Now You See Me and all the classic, you know, magician movies. And I look in, and I, I peek into a space. It's gorgeous. This is gorgeous, like, 45-seat, like, kind of theater-ish space. Beautiful little stage. He put in all his brand-new lighting. I was like, listen, I'm sold on this. Austin, like, this is cool. You should definitely take this. I would, you know, we'll, I'll come and help out. I'll drop sets like fucking a madman whenever you get this thing up and running. But it's this guy's space. So for now, let's get out of here. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to go into the space. So I just peeked in. I was like, but I don't want to go onto a stage because I don't want to, you know, I don't want him to get pissed. Mess, I would get pissed if someone just the, randomly, the vibes, yeah. if like our landlord was like, just come in and see what these guys are doing. I'm like, get out, get the fuck out, right? And fix the leak in the ceiling. So we go upstairs, thank him. Mind you, we have not seen the magician once. <laughs> it's the greatest trick. I, tur I turned to the bar to thank the guy that was showing us the space. Now you see me. And then I feel a presence behind me, and I shit you not. Me and Austin turn, and the guy's just right there. And he goes, were you guys just downstairs? And I was like, 
then I was like, do I lie to this magician? Because he, clearly he has magical powers. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to lie to the guy. Do I lie? What if he turned like, did, did you have the feeling that you were in a situation you should lie? Well, because I was like, he was he watching us downstairs? I don't know what to do. Like, he knows the answer. Like, he knows we were there, yeah. right? So, like, I'm like, you know I was there. Why are you trying to catch me in a lie right now? So, you know, and you know I can't lie anyway. So, I was like, yeah. And then he just looked at me. And then, like, we just stared at each other for a solid 20 seconds. <laughs> And then I was like, well, we're going to go. And we left. And that was the last time. But I, then I started thinking, I was like. He was dead the whole time. I was like, wow. is this guy the world's best magician? Because he was not there. I swear to God, he was not there. <laughs> <laughs> and then a second later, he just, <laughs> poof, like, appeared out of nothing. It was amazing. I would love more than anything to get this guy's side of the story. <laughs> oh, he was probably like, who the fuck are these people in my space? And I walked in, I was like, yo, why were you in my space? And this is some asshole. It's just turns I was like, yeah, I was. He was like, dude, I was in the room the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> this, this dude was oblivious. You were, you were hammered. <laughs> anyway, there's, was... there's nothing more interesting than magicians. Because it's just like, it, it, there's something weird about it. You know what I mean? Just to, uh, to oh, begin oh, 100%. with. 100%. It's just like, yeah. like, you're tricking me. All you do is, you're tricksters. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then you just add on the fact that like, it, they they can win you over or creep you the fuck out so quickly. Sure. Because yeah. yeah. how many times have you seen a magician you're like, and it's that vibe, you know, I don't like you, I don't want anything to do with you, this is weird. But remember that time at VidCon? Yes. When we made best Gambit. friends with Gambit. Yeah. <laughs> this Gambit fucking dude, magician. we're just at the lobby uh, bar of a hotel. And like, Not Taylor we're, all, Kitsch. we're all talking, no. we're hanging out, Very close and up. this dude just comes up to us, pulls out some cards, and we all had this fucking feeling. No. We're just like, Here we go. fuck this guy. Like, we're, this, having a, we're having a libation after a long day. It's me day when I bring in the guitar. Networking, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, you don't want right. to deal with this shit. And he just starts doing tricks, and like within 15 seconds, we're like, Hey, can you just hang out with us for the rest of the weekend? And legit, this kid just fucking hung out with us. We took him everywhere. And we're like, You guys, you gotta see this. Well, fucking I wanna say his trick. name was Jarek. Jared, Whoa, yeah. the magician. Cool yeah, that's name. awesome. And and, and that villain name. This dude, yeah. amateur pro Me, wrestler. Porn star. Oh. Uh -oh. And I wouldn't made you in porn star. <laughs> and his whole wrestling thing is he's a magician. That's sick. and he does some dope shit with it. That's I wonder really what he's that. Like, what do you think he, he had a ridiculously successful uh, YouTube career. Did he? Yeah, doing prank videos because there, there was magic pranks. Street Whoa, pranks. street pranks. Dude. That sounds uh, awesome. They were they were fucking really really cool. He did this one prank. Or not prank. One trick that like we had him come to IGN and we filmed a bunch of shit and we never actually put it up. Yeah. We dressed him like Gambit because he did card tricks. That's, That's right. What we call him Gambit. Sure. But uh, he, Gambit Street Magic. He, was what he we did were a call bunch that. of like uh, crazy ass tricks where like if you handed him your phone, like and you could watch what he's doing, <laughs> he would hand he, you back a broken phone. <laughs> <laughs> he could get your phone number, and like, I don't remember the the steps of how it happened, but like he would just be like, "I know your number." And be like, what the fuck did he say? You're like, how the fuck? Like, I saw everything you did. It's really weird shit. There's a really good hmm. series on True gotcha. TV that's sort of the same thing where it's like street prank magic style shit. Um, and I, I'm just blanking on the name right now. Barrett, can you maybe Google street magic true TV? And it's this one dude. He's, su he's super charming. But what he always does is he always fakes as, a, as an employee of a certain place, right? And uh, he, there's always like a gimmicky thing they're trying to sell to these people, and it's all hidden camera. People walk in. Is this like, on Netflix? Hmm. Has this ever happened? It's to probably you? on Netflix, but yeah. it's like it originates on True TV. No, but one of them is like he walk. Uh, guys walk into a, a shoe place, kind of like a uh, I don't know, like a shoe carnival sort of uh, place, and he's like, "Yeah, we're selling these new uh, shoelaces that they tie up." What's, what's, a, what's shoe a shoe carnival? carnival? Shoe carnival. It's a store. Wait, you guys don't know shoe carnival? Yeah, I'm see? with you. Yeah. yeah, is it a Midwest? Blessing thing? is with me. Oh my god, the I was Carbonaro like, you guys effect. legitimately have <laughs> carnivals for no. shoes? Yeah, no, it's, it's like with it's like, like rides that are shoe themed. It's like a champs or anything like that. Yeah, it's got it. Big okay, okay, uh, okay. The Carbonaro effect is what it's called. My my dad fucking loves this show, uh, and he, uh, my dad always like DVRs it whenever we go back home. He always wants to like show me the newest episodes, and they're always really fucking good. But he has little gimmicks where again he's selling. Uh, these cool products to people and they walk in he's like have you seen these uh, shoelaces they tie themselves if you just sort of shake your feet and they're like really and, and then i don't know what they do it's probably you know camera Magic, tricks bro. and shit like that Magic but he has his feet there and he shakes his feet and he goes yeah so they tie up and they it shows the shoe and they're I've like seen this. no fucking way and like these people are freaking out about these products but it's such a genius concept for these strangers to walk in and uh the, there's like a, oh yeah, here's a little pill, and, and uh, when, when you pour water in it, it turns into like a bird. And they made these pills to, and he always gives like some stupid backstory, and the people are like, 
Really? Wow. Wow. And 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 they're for they're for yeah they're for sale here. You can take them if you want. And they're like really wow. And it's really well done, man. But magic's fucking cool. magic again. <laughs> cool or creepy? Yeah. Cool. Do or they, creepy. Now does he let them walk out of the store and then take their money? Because that would be hilarious. And they no. get home, they're like, this thing's not turning into a bird. And also, <laughs> no. I mean, I'm sure that, you know. I'm sure they, ta- they stop. Obviously, some people point. are plants, but so, like, I'd like to think that one of my biggest talents is when I know when things are bullshit or not. And when people are acting or not. Absolutely not. It's one Nick, of my biggest absolutely. talents. Nick, okay, well, there's definitely not enough time for tomorrow. But you guys are like, what should we do for KFA? Yeah. You need to do the Andy bullshit test. Of like, you I need know, to guys. Prep him on I a bunch know. of things. Oh, I, I know. Not. Because it's always uh, bullshit fucking Facebook videos that your aunt shares. Real or where fake. It's, it's, a, it's a guy uh, giving a bunch of money to some homeless person in the street. And you know they're bo- and. It's just fucking stupid reaction. It's supposed to be like really like wholesome. Everything and like everything the Dobre look brothers this, do. Look at what this man does on the street. when like, it's, uh, Everybody's fucking acting, you know? It's mm-hmm. obvious. But these people's reactions in these shows are like, they seem so goddamn genuine where they are legitimately freaking out. And I got to assume it's sort of the David Blaine thing that uh, was debunked where David Blaine will do a trick that's, you know, moderately uh, hard to see on TV. Yeah. But then they make it. But then the trick that they're showing the people looks a lot more difficult than what it really is. So it's like they're playing with editing and stuff like sure, that. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but it's a really fascinating show. I mean, I don't, fun. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I ever actually seen a live magic show. Obviously, we've seen people like walk up and do like street magic to you, card tricks and whatnot. But I don't think I've ever sat. I'm curious now to go see this guy's show because I'm like, what does two hours or an hour and a half of like a real magic show look like? We gotta do it. Yeah. Like, that sounds like go, an awesome trip. I'm down. Yeah. I mean, this guy's like, I don't. I, I, I would give him a shout out for his name, but I, I didn't bother to learn it. Um, <laughs> but he's apparently very successful, and the theater looks dope. Yeah. So I don't know, and it, apparently, you know, that's not the only. I think it's called the Magic Theater, is what his is called. But there's like a, a few little nooks of magicians in the city. God, <laughs> like this is <laughs> there's a little magician commune. So there's, there is. There's like there's this one. This is this is the second theater I've heard of in the city that does full time magic. They're like rivals. <laughs> I bet they are. I don't know if that's him or maybe because like by my jujitsu gym in the Mission, the guy there's a, apparently a magician that moved in next door. But I've never seen him. There's no signage whatsoever, and God. occasionally you just hear audience members. But I don't. I can't figure out how to get into this building. It's like Magician every time I is just it. such a funny noun to put into sentences. Yeah, it's just like it just makes it funnier because yeah. like, it's I, like saying warlock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this like, warlock, like, is like, lizard. It's but it's not real. No. <laughs> <laughs> but like, think about the, the thing I think about a lot is like the, it, it takes a special kind of someone to want to be a magician in na- yeah. nowadays. But I kind of get it, right? Because like, you guys just name like five shows that people. I guess yeah, if you get no, big. I mean, it's you can cool. Get, it's fascinating stuff. But you get a Vegas so residency. Makes there's a guy in America's money. Got Talent who was, I think, got oh. close or almost won. He won. I think. He's are you an about Asian the dude. Asian right? kid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like super awesome. He's here. So God good. Damn, this he's dude in like Ellen and good shit. Looking. Wait, can we Google this kid? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but he was uh, sort of how he got to the very end was just a lot of like sleight of hand sort of stuff and incredibly impressive and like. Giving cards to the judges and and goddamn uh what's his name from American Idol uh Sim- Simon Simon Peg. Peg Simon no no Simon. <laughs> I don't Simon Card Cowl Cowl, Cowl. Simon Card I just remember him on a Simon Card is right here. Either way, he's like doing really really awesome Not shit, and he got to the very very end. Uh, but he uh, God that dude had like the best head of hair. Oh my God! I Speaking of see great heads hair, of hair, Barrett. Speaking of great heads of hair, I got to hang with the voice of Genji. And this Wait, really? dude is jacked. Wait, really? Yeah, at the at the Overwatch thing, his name is Gaku Space. He was in the street, Jesus. some Street Fighter movie that they like. Legend of Chun Li. No, not that one. It was, a live it was another one. Something that like was a fan made thing that was kind of picked up um, or whatever. This dude is jacked. He's got the best fucking head of hair I've ever seen in my life, Nick. Holy shit, it's so thick. What do you? Would it surprise you to hear that I now simultaneously hate this man and love him? Dude, he's the nicest dude in the world, man. And he went onto the crowd and he did Genji's like ultimate sound, What's like that ultimate the like? uh, Yunji Konai. I don't know what the fucking words are. It's, yeah. it's all Japanese. But <laughs> yeah. then like the whole crowd went all high. That's fucking shit. awesome. Yeah. I got my haircut yesterday, and the woman told Looks me good. three times that I have thick hair, and I was just like, I've never heard anyone talk about thick hair until you thick hair. until you guys. Here he is. Oh, here here I am. Shin Lim. Shin Lim. Shin. Oh, he is good looking. Yeah, Shin dude. Lim. 
Oh, and yeah, he's got such boy. a great like stage presence. Yeah, as well. he's like cocky as fuck. And he's, like, he's engaging with yeah. you. And he's like talking to you. It's, this looks it's like so the good. kind of guy that I want to give me some fucking magic. <laughs> 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 See, here's the thing though. So you know? you're talking about. Are we going to this magic show? We gotta go to this. There's multiple magicians in San Francisco. You're telling me. Yeah, and but the thing is like, or maybe the same one. I don't know. He can be anywhere. Multiple places at once. But so the performers, right? It makes sense. Cool, whatever. People like magic. Magic is undeniably interesting and fun to watch, right? There were very few things that you could say you're a performer, right? Like you could do music, you could do comedy, I guess you could do magic, but like with, with like rap music, right? You're in the underground scene, you're trying to make your way up, you go to open mics, yeah. and you just kind of rap and hope somebody gives a fuck. I if saw the evolution do, of hip hop. If you're trying to do comedy, you go to open mics, and you just yeah. tell jokes and hope somebody gives a fuck. Are there open mics for magic? Yeah, you can, you yeah. can go to a comedy Seems open so mic right. and do magic there if you want. No, that's not. No, I'm but you mean like there a magic open mic? Oh no, I think it would just be you'd go to that. There's, there's the from, open hat. In my opinion, or <laughs> from my experience, there's two types of open mics. There's comedic open mics for just comedy, and then there's like, and like I forget what they call variety them, show. Term. Yeah, it's like basically like a um, high school talent show. Yeah. It's for like musicians or magicians or whatever. It's just an, a straight up open mic. You can do whatever talent you want. Show, read, or... read poetry if you want. It doesn't God. matter. Those are the huh. worst, by the way. Those are definitively the worst. Well, I gotta assume they're. It's called a mixed mic. It's scatterbrained. Mixed mic. Well, it's just like someone go, focused. So here's what goes up, right? Someone will go up and do, you know, you get five minutes and you'll get a comic up there like myself who goes up and like, I'll probably bomb, but I'll, I'll get a couple chuckles here and I'll try to engage the audience and it'll be cool. And then the host will come up and they'll be like, next up, we've got uh, Tim Geddes and Tim's going to be playing us some music. And then Tim gets up there and fucking just tunes his guitar for like fucking th- three minutes. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. The audience is just like, I don't want any part of this. Then he yeah. goes, uh, "Where's the, what do you call those things, those little clamps that you bought in three? Capo. He goes, where's my capo? I, I can't. Okay, oh, capo goes on. Tune it again. Boom, 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 boom. Meanwhile, I'm like, this time is money. Is yeah. this shit fucking like, you know, I got to go. Let's get back to the comedy. Because here's, yeah. here's what it probably is, right? When you go to a comedy uh, open mic, there. Like I literally saw someone do a mic. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. I saw someone do a song where they were like, the guy was playing and she she was doing music, but it was not her music. It was popular songs, but she didn't even bother to learn the lyrics, so she was reading them off of her phone. And I'm like, you're just <laughs> yeah. carry you're just lazy as fuck. Yeah, I got it because you go to a stand up uh, open mic, and there are varying degrees of good, right? Like it, usually, yeah, you bad. can you can walk out, but say you can walk out and say these two people were, pro- were pretty good out got of the little, ten yeah. that I saw. These Promise. They, were, they weren't bad, you know. But at one of these sort of it's it's a smorgasbord or whatever the hell you want. Sometimes you right? get good musicians. But the sure. thing is, like, if there's two musicians and two comedians and two magicians and two whatever the fuck, no like, anymore. what are the odds at any, like, what, you know what I mean? Like, you yeah. walk yeah. out, you're like, all of it was shit. <laughs> it was like, terrible. <laughs> every, every once in a while, because I've been going to a lot more mics recently, and every once in a while, some of the heavy hitters from the scene will pop in to, like, do some new material that they're trying out. Like, these are people that are, like, past the punchline. So every once in a while, you get... Just kind of, it's just shit, 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 then me bombing, and then they'll go and just light up the room. And then the next, it's the saddest thing, because they'll light up the room, and then the next guy will be like his first time, and he'll be like, this is going to be fucking awesome. And he goes and just eats oh. shit. And it's so funny to watch. That's such a bummer. <laughs> my, so a, a buddy of mine, that uh, one of my best friends that I uh, actually played in my band, and like we've known each other our whole lives, right? Um he went, we'd always make fun of him because he would go through these like hardcore phases of stuff, whether he was <laughs> incredibly into Yu-Gi-Oh for like Who short spans of time, right? Yeah. Uh, Incredible, like we'd always be like, oh, what's next? Yo-yos? Like we'd always come up with like stupid ass shit. Was but he was yo-yo super forever. into magic for like the almost, gathering or almost actual a year, magic? Like, ma- like doing magic tricks and learning sleight of hand and going to car, going to magic shops and uh, buying books and learning like sleight of hand tricks and shit like that, and he got like really good at it to where he was the guy at parties that would bust out the cards. But like we'd never thought of as my friend as like a lame person. But when he'd bust out the cards, he'd be like, "Fuck, check this one. This is fucking tight, dude." Like, and he was the <laughs> cool guy at the party because he was, and he would trick, trick, Magic, freak dude. everybody out. Cool yeah, and creepy, man. dude. It's it's yeah, not dude. such a. Thin I mean, I think line. a lot of it is your aesthetic, right? Like my friend JP, he's a cool looking dude. He's got like cool hair and shit. It's like. And he'd bust out these cards. Be like, "All right, this What's is gonna be level. It's gonna be sick. No, no, no facial hair." I feel oh, like wow. it, it is all in how you present it when you're a like. There's two things at parties that can just be the worst possible thing ever: the magic show or the guy that decided to be Fran and bring his acoustic guitar to no, the party. No, fuck you. That was <laughs> the greatest <laughs> moment of my life. The greatest moment. Eric Hart's thirtieth birthday. There are twenty people at this place. We are all drunk. It's been a long fucking day, and it is like ten p.m. 
And Fran just fucking comes in with an acoustic guitar and just starts playing Wonderwall. And everyone just sits there and just looks at him. And, like, we had to take it seriously. And it went from a joke to all of us being like, I guess this is actually happening. And this is our reality now. And he just stopped. And just then he accepted went, it. And then he just left. Fucking Fran, dude. Fucking Fran. Like, was he singing? Would any of you... Would any of you be shocked if it was like, oh, Fran does magic. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. No, not at all. It is, it is, it takes a certain, <laughs> it takes a certain level of uh, uh, obliviousness uh, yeah. to want to do both oh of those God. things at a party. I would, that's like as pretentious as me going, I'm going to do a comedy set for all of you right now at this party. That's, and I've done, and I, people have made me do that before, specifically at family gatherings. God. And it's so awkward. <laughs> tell, oh, tell a joke. Sucks. Dude, I would seriously fucking pay. I want to fund a series where we teach Fran magic. We get him to do magic, and then, then he performs. Can you imagine? Wait. <laughs> no, wait, so this this he wouldn't, a, he wouldn't stop trying to break his own magic oh for long God, enough to do the magic right. trick. You're Fran right. is always like, needs to know how everything works. And like, he's, <laughs> he had this, uh, I don't know if you know this about him or not, but for the longest time, PR people hated him because when he used to review games, he'd go and purposely try to break the game. And they'd be like, Fran, don't run into that. Fu- okay, all right. And he's like, well, this this level doesn't work that well. And they're like, Fran, it's a fucking, like, it's a build of the game. It's not supposed to, you know, well, I'm going to try to jump up on this box right here. And like, Fran, no, oh, don't do that. All right. <laughs> not only that, but, like, I, I legit am serious when I say this. Fran, like, just by being within proximity of anything electrical, anything specifically computer, like oriented, like computer chip, will break it. It will just stop working. It's I was the hair. It's a lot I'm of like, get the fuck energy. away from our printer because we have enough problem with the printer <laughs> in this alone. But God bless him. I wish God I was at that him. party. I was. I wasn't there. I think I was on my honeymoon. Yeah, you were. Yeah. God, that, oh, that was like I, the never, dark, like, stormy it, night. It's honestly, guys, it was way funnier than it sounds. It's like it was oh, just yeah, the I most surreal moment, and like it was punctuated by the fact that we were there. I don't even remember where the fuck we went. It was like somewhere in Marin. Like we went on like a. Grown up, sleepover. it was a trek. Like it was a trek. We're in the middle of the fucking woods. Like it was weird as hell. It was awesome, but we were there for like three days, like like multiple nights. And Fran kept doing weird Fran shit. Like that wasn't the end of it. Was it? Didn't he also cook for he you? He also guys made for, like, pasta that took him like fourteen <laughs> hours to make. He also then the next morning after the guitar session d- <laughs> promised that he'd make coffee for us. And it's like okay. You make coffee, right? Like that means the, the lazy man. You pop a pot in the thing. Oh, you hit yeah. go. I know this. One. Yeah, the, even it. like the the less lazy man. You do some French roast or whatever the fuck. I don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah. you know sure. the weird little like white paper yeah, stuff to put the down. beans in. That's, that's a no, 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 no. Fran didn't do that. He did eventually, coffee. but before that, he took a bunch of beans and grounded them up himself. Well, you, you got to do it fresh. I just got these <laughs> in this specialty place, whatever. And you you got to wait. You got to wait. And he starts grinding, grinding, grinding. He stops. Yeah, you got to wait a couple minutes. You got to let it aerate. <laughs> I fucking oh, I, I hear it in my mind like it's it's happening now. Fucking it. Fran. What well, um, wh- who was present for the E three party? Because I I wasn't there, but I've heard uh, this last year's E three party. I it was, was like was two years there. ago. Two years ago, it was I, the I one where he had two places rented out. <laughs> He had two I places there. I was out. there. That's the Steiner one. was there. Why did he have two places to rent it out? <laughs> I don't know. But I think, I, I think he rented a guitar. Like one to yeah. sleep in, one yeah. to bang in? What? He, he rented a guitar. <laughs> he didn't bring to it. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> to have it in case. Just in case there was a party that broke out. And ladies and gentlemen, guess what happened? A party broke out. But did the people, did anyone at the party Yo, go? People you know were demanding this? this fucking Fran playing oh. guitar. Demanding. And it happened. And it was magical. I have legitimately never been to a party that was made better by an acoustic guitar. <laughs> never in my life have I Dude, been to that. You, you it's haven't always been to a Fran awkward. Party. It always makes me want to no, bully the, the person that brings the guitar. There's something about Fran that makes it not awkward. You just push through, and it's you're I'm saying not that, joking. but you delight sometimes in Fran's like weirdness. I love it so much. <laughs> it makes me so much happiness. He needs to do magic. <laughs> <laughs> Fran magic, fragic. <laughs> oh god. We'll have him do magic one day. How do we become Should friends with magic? Fran? You? Yeah. No, just hang oh, out. Oh, just, just, like, <laughs> just like stand near him for like the first a good, time I like, saw him. The first minutes. time he walked in the office, I was like mesmerized by his energy. <laughs> like his hair, his style, like his smell. <laughs> I don't know it what cologne. So strong. Yeah, yeah, no, his smell is like strong, yeah. and I was like, good, good, strong. By the way, yeah, yeah, yeah no, it's, it's a good smell. Strong. It's like, a purposeful like. It's like, like he's it's making like a, he's making something a expensive, yes. like sandalwood and and cedar and John Varvados' sweat or something like that. You know. 
<laughs> it's a designer. It's expensive. You wouldn't uh, know. I wouldn't know. Because we don't we can't afford him. But Fran, <laughs> Fran fucking one percent or But this this is interesting though, Bless. Like we haven't had somebody like new come in to mm-hmm. that has to deal with Fran. Not has Fran to energy. gets to. Because like, yeah, no, so, so far I have no complaints with Fran. There's, the more there's I no complaints. No, like, no complaints the more I see him, the more delighted I am no, yeah, that he's it's, here. It's more that like that he has a lot of traits that somebody would model a cartoon character out here. Yeah. Like, like where, like just really kind the of comedic relief cartoon intricate, character. like kind of weird, funny, quirky it's things eccentric. about him. Yeah. Very eccentric traits. Yeah. So if you want to get to know Fran the best, just stand there and let him ask you questions and then let him answer those questions for you. That's the best <laughs> way to become Fran's friend. But all throughout my tenure at IGN, uh, this is my favorite thing that he did. And by favorite, I mean I'm glad it, I'm not. His, he's not my boss anymore because he used to drive me nuts. He'd be like, Nick, did you uh, did you spec out those cameras like I asked you? You didn't, did you? I'll tell you why you should have done this. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even answer the question yet. <laughs> and the shitty thing was, every single time he answered it for me, he knew I didn't do the thing. Yeah. I was like, I didn't fucking do the thing you asked me to do because I don't care. I was at Starbucks for three hours yeah. with Tim, yeah. giving Tim life advice on Dude. when to use condoms. <laughs> <laughs> and how to deal with Fran. <laughs> I was like, here's how you deal with Fran. Uh, Kevin Kevin dealing with Fran was my absolute favorite. I mean, yeah. Here, so here's the deal. That was my absolute here's the deal. favorite. Is how it went is Fran was Nick's boss for mm-hmm. so long and Nine that years. caused a lot of PTSD that we've gotten over. Yeah, I feel like Fran. You, I mean, years, and right? Fran knows as I've talked about. It, but he, Fran used to just trigger me a little bit for as as you would if you were friends with someone who was also your boss yeah, for nine. Totally, years. totally. But, but then, now we're cool. But then I came along yeah. and I was under you. Yeah. And then for then Fran, I still had to deal with Fran all the time. But Nick kind of just taught me how to like not. Go maneuver, against him, maneuver. but just maneuver with yeah. him. Yeah. Maneuver yeah. around go him. With the flow. You know what I mean? Go yeah. with the flow. Let it let it all happen. But then I brought Kevin in. Oh, and you God. guys can imagine oh, how that oh, went. No. Yeah, no. Kevin was like, oh, there's a thing in my way. Mm-mm. Went right, r- would just run right that into it. Like Dude. I would not want to so be around So IGN, there's a vibe at I, or there was a vibe at IGN where it's like it's an open office floor plan. So it's like everybody, like if there's a loud conversation going on, everyone can hear it. Or at least everyone knows a loud conversation is mm. happening, right? Tends to be pretty mellow unless something's happening, right? Like a, a trailer dropped. Oh, let's go look at the. Yeah. Oh, somebody got Play a smash. new dog. Or the Smash Brothers. Something's happening, right? right? Except until Kevin came, then all of a sudden it was just daily. Hey, friend, 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 and he would. Friend would walk around like trying to get away from Kevin, and Kevin would just chase him down, <laughs> and it was the most satisfying thing in the fucking world because all of a sudden. It was my the two things that I didn't want to deal with. Yeah. They had to deal with each other. each other. And Kevin loved it, man. Oh, Kevin loved fucking with me. He still does. You still see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he pushes the buttons very, very oh, yeah. quickly. It's great. And I'll be he's honest, so like, manipulated. He's so like, I know exactly what little part to hit. Right well, here. he's Poke he's e- he's equal parts insidious and oblivious. That's Kevin right there. So he doesn't quite know how much he's getting you, but then when he figures it out, it's time to go harder. Oh yeah, and especially I, on Fran. Oh god, yeah. Plus, especially since he used to run the syndication. And I was like, I couldn't care less about Yeah, it. Nick could not this. give a I fuck give a less shit. about what Kevin was doing, but he oh, had to do it. It was a job that had to get done. No, I, t- I told him I was there like, was just revamp so it. There was so much room for improvement that Kevin, M- Mr. Fixed It, was just like, whoa, 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 this is broken as fuck. Why are we doing things this way, this way, this way? We should be doing it this way, this way, this way. It is the only answer. Like, we're demonstrably doing this wrong. And everyone knew it. So that made it even worse because it was just like all Kevin right. needed was the power to be able to make the changes. And Kevin's just like, friend, like you just got to okay this. You gotta, he's like, oh, no. but the, the engineering team's busy. They got to do all this stuff. Kevin's like, I'll go talk to the engineering team. He's like, no, leave them alone. Don't do anything. Kevin's like, I'm going to talk to the engineering team. Like, no, come on, friend. And he's just like, walk around. And then like, what would end up happening? Kevin would go talk to the engineering team. And then the it, like the entire 300 no. person company so here's, had to deal with Kevin. So here's what you never saw too because he'd go talk to them. And then me being Kevin's boss, they'd get pissed off and come talk to me. And I would go like this. I will totally talk to him about that. And then I never would ever. <laughs> then I'd go to Starbucks to and not give a fuck. Because at the end of the day, as if he's annoying someone else to get shit done, I don't care. And Kev got it, it all done. done. Got it all done. Yeah, man. by the end, by by the end of like three months there. Kevin was had like revamped. He like tripled the subscriptions on YouTube yeah. across like all the different channels. And shit. It was like so fucking funny to see it all happen. And so it's like you can't really get mad at it, but God, it was funny watching him chase yeah. Fran around. God, I loved it. He used to go into like he chased him into meetings, and Fran would just yeah. walk into the room like shut the door. Yeah, <laughs> and, like they look, and Kevin, and Kevin would still be talking. All the about, conference the glass. rooms had glass, and Kevin would just like <laughs> he would just be like circling around it like a shark. <laughs> it was like a horror movie. Yeah. Yeah. It, really it is terrifying. But when he's not doing it to you, it's a Fucking hilarious! Yeah. <laughs> it was so fun. Oh man, uh, Tim. Magic, I, wait, real quick, I just oh, yeah. quickly want to talk about uh, the Dallas event that I went to. I went to uh, 
the opening weekend of uh, the Dallas Fuels games for Overwatch League. It was a lot of awesome games. It was fun as shit. Thanks to everybody who came out to the meet and greets. Uh, I thought there would be like maybe five people. And, uh, you know, there were six. There was like 18 the first time. Oh, and wow. the second time there was like maybe 12. Hell yeah. Like that. yeah. So, and, it, and it was super unofficial. I was like, they had this whole big stand like set up for me where I'd like sit behind the desk and do the signing. And, I was, like, and I was like, no, I'm just going to just let's stand over here and just talk in a circle to he each other. Cool. And that's all we did. And it was fun. Um a lot of cool events. The 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 whole venue was awesome. Uh, the whole setup was really cool, and uh, they sold out. I think both nights, or at least the first night, there was like at least twenty five hundred people there, or something like that. A lot of people there to watch Overwatch, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, and Dallas is really cool. And we we stayed in the same. Uh, the cool thing about it is Art uh, Arlington Esports Stadium is like. Next to the Texas Rangers Stadium, which is next to uh, Dal- Dallas Cowboy Stadium, which like it's all one giant area Stadium that's City. just full of everything, uh, along with this place called Texas Live, which is like a nightmare. It- it's basically a shopping mall, but instead of stores, it's just a bunch of loud ass bars that are playing different Competing loud music. music. Oh my god, dude! It's that's fucking, like your worst nightmare. It's horrible, dude. And the main <laughs> the main place of this Texas Live thing. Um, it's like double layered, like two story or whatever, and giant LED walls, like playing all sorts of sport, like all sorts of sports games, soccer, uh, baseball, all this sort of shit, and uh, it, which is pretty cool when you just want to sit down and have a drink and you have these m- gigantic screens to look at, and then like fucking trance music starts playing, mm-hmm. and then. Mm-hmm. Some of the screens go black, and then it's just like a title pops up, and it's like, uh, the, I guess Tiesto. the DJ's name. <laughs> something, <laughs> something very similar to the Tiesto pops up in like a 3D font doing oh, this. Oh, God. And then like, like a screensaver? <laughs> and then <laughs> visual, visualizer behind it, you know? And then the fucking screens open. Yeah. They open up, and he's in the center there on the, on like the very Scott bottom. Like a Scott Pilgrim boss fight? He's That's on, awesome. He's on the bottom behind his DJ desk, and there's like six girls dancing around him. And meanwhile, everybody's just like eating chicken fingers. <laughs> <laughs> like, and drinking beer, and it's like this is not a club. I don't know what you think this is, dude. When I this went, is not that. <laughs> when I went, um, when I went and saw Lizzo, her opening act. Uh, she had two opening acts, uh, and one of them ended up being the DJ for her, uh, who was cool. She was trying to hype the audience up, and like, and to be fair, like I give anyone who is an opening act who's trying to get like people's attention while they're still filing in and getting booze. Like I give you guys it's a thankless a job. A ton of sure. props. Barrett, real quick, but can you Google Texas Live uh, Dallas? Our internet is out. Oh, fuck. Okay. Sorry. Um, oh, good. Hey, everyone. What's up? Welcome <laughs> from watching this live and pre-recorded. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but I, dude, I, I, I like, because I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to try and get the audience to just pay attention to a little bit. But, like, man, so her DJ was, like, we were watching because, of course, my wife and I went to see Lizzo, and we got there, of course, early. Like, well, <laughs> well before Four anyone should have ever <laughs> showed up. To get, like, because we were, like, it's open seating, so we want to make sure we get good seats. Yeah. We're in these seats for, like, two hours yeah. before <laughs> anyone gets around us. But it was hype. Um, yeah, her, her DJ was great. And I think it's the DJ that ends up and performing with her, which was cool, too. She's like, I'll be back with Lizzo in a little bit. But then she had another act come on, and it was these two women, and they were just... It was like kind of a white stripes type thing. It was just two of them. Uh, maybe it was a guy and a girl. I can't remember. They were like dressed weirdly. I couldn't tell from the stage. But it was so bad. And it wasn't their fault. It was just people. It just, We just came from this insanely hype Lizzo yeah. like DJ to like indie. Like I'm playing guitar. Ba- oh, that God. It, rough, was, man. it was tough. It was tough. And like I'm like, I'm not feeling. The audience was not feeling this music. They were like, come on. Yeah, let's get hype. And I was like, Mm-mm, Mm-mm, no, people were literally yeah. like, no, no, don't want not this. Bring that, Lizzo. That's how this was. But there was no there was no segue. There was no stage or, or like <laughs> rather he was on a stage, but there was no pit or anything like that. There was a bar area and then you would walk in between the the Kevin of Texas Live with all his different screens and he's switching monitors or whatever. Yeah, there's no place to like dance or gather around. It's just people sitting like against uh, like they had sort of like a like bar setups or whatever, or just people sitting down in their tables with their families, like really bizarre. And like these like sexy dancers are dancing. And it's like, <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> it's the weirdest vibe ever. So then, but luckily, uh, all of us kind of um, me and some people that work for like the Dallas Few organization went to some. 
kind of like nerdy bar. Like, I mean, they had like basketball, like arcade shit or whatever. Um, and they were playing a bunch of like emo music, so it was pretty tight. Yeah. But, but again, every place is just so loud in that. It's spot. like every Twitch party I've ever been to in yep. my life. Where you walk in, you're like, how is the parking lot Plus, this loud? Have yeah. you ever been to a Twitch party? not even in the fucking building no. yet. Don't ever go to a Twitch party. No? It is, it is that. It is just great people. Lovely people. God, you, you won't know a single word they're saying. Nope. It is just, oomts, oomts, oomts. I hate those parties. And it, yeah. it, it's just Everyone hates smoke. those parties. Like, I don't everyone. understand why there's everyone. why we keep doing this. <laughs> because <laughs> like, why those some, still continue. Because some PR person who doesn't understand the video game industry thinks this is the kind of thing that video game people like. And it's like... Straight up, like Johnny Mnemonic 1990s, you're like, that must be what computer games are like, right? Yeah, let's do that. And you're like, this is so totally off. It's like, yeah. they saw Bad Boys it's 1, fucking, and they're like, we need to remake that yeah. scene. Yes, it's a fucking networking event. The number one thing you need to be able to do is say hello to people you haven't seen in a while and like catch up and be like, yeah, I'm still alive, you're still alive, you're still doing stuff. Let's do stuff together. But when you're literally just like, I'm trying to guess what Tim's saying by the shape of what his lips are making, but I just, I'm fucking lost. Yeah. Not only that, but like, pulse pounding music takes it out of you. Oh, I'm yes. like this is like three parties in one right now. I can't go to the other parties I want to go. It's to. crazy. Like like if it's me, blessing and Nick that are sitting there, and Nick is telling the story. Blessing's hearing it. I'm not. I'm barely hearing it. And and I too. would have to get close. And I like, and we're all like just in a little. It, it was not not a great experience. <laughs> I love it. Though. I love the idea of this wall just opening up and just a dude. Yeah. Hopefully the <laughs> internet comes back up because it, it's it's really uh, quite the scene. Back up. Can you Google um uh, Texas like spell out Texas and then live and then uh, Dallas. Hey everyone, welcome back to the live show. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, sorry guys, and just look for images. There it is. The the uh, the to let that one, that one, that one. Right, right, right. That one. So this is sort of how the state. Oh, it's a very, very yeah. small photo. Let's get a zoom. But you can see how big the people are, right? Oh, so people are just drink, like eating dinner. Like right yeah, there. people are just sitting down it's at cool their state. benches or whatever. <laughs> but so these two screens to the to the right and left of them, uh, s like move. So hmm. originally oh, that's all that's covered up. Dope. That is actually pretty sick. And so. Uh, to, you know, when you're basically looking at it, the giant screen has a game, and then where it says Texas and Live on the top right, so those are there's different games playing there. Cool. And the screens that are actually moving and that kind of uh, uh, reveal the stage, <laughs> if you want to call that a stage, uh, that's they have different games on or whatever. But then when the big music act comes on, that's where it's like, oh, this shit's gonna get insane right now. I can't wait. And then it's just really bad 3D font of whatever the DJ's <laughs> name was with like colors behind it. And let's everybody on their feet. And like, oh, just, I'm standing eating. <laughs> there's, <laughs> just, there's, there's, there's nothing more sad than that. But again, I empathize with these people because you just described my entire stand up comedy career. <laughs> this is me desperately trying to get people's attention who do not want me there. Who do not want anything to do with it's me? Tonight, no, but it, it's, the, the show you're doing is it a show or is it an open mic? Which one? The tonight? one you're doing tonight. Uh, the one tonight I'm doing tonight is a legit show. Okay, good. Over okay. At neck of the woods. The one on I'm doing at Cobb's on Sunday as well. Uh, Cobb's comedy Sunday. Come out and see me. That's a show as well. It's going to be a good. Tim, one. you trying to go? Potentially. Because I'm I'm thinking I'm going tonight. Tickets. Okay. Cobb's yeah. comedy. Here's the, here's the thing about about your stand up though, Nick. What, when you when it's you trying to get people into it and you bomb and it's quiet, that's like got to be way worse than when you're trying to get people into club music and whether people are booing and cheering, you can't hear them anyway because well, it's loud as hell. You know what I think the difference is? Is that you can, if with a good, a couple good jokes, you can actually bring a crowd that does not want it into like, oh, I'll pay attention to this guy for three minutes while he does comedy. But I can't imagine a situation where I'm like, I really don't want to listen to like EDM right now. And then someone turns it around. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck these chicken wings. Yeah, I do want to rage right now. <laughs> I do want to be at a rave right now. I don't know, man. There's some about comedy because it's like, it's, such a call and response type thing of like it's just one voice. Like you can drown out the music and stuff. With comedy, if you're at a place that you don't want, if you're just if you're just eating, right? And you don't know that you're going to a place with with comedy. comedy. Oh, and God, then they're like, the oh, it's the comedy. Yeah. And then like like random ass motherfuckers go up and start doing comedy. It's the worst because they're gonna start talking shit about you eating and not laughing. And it's like, great. So now I'm being ridiculed for you telling shitty jokes that I'm just trying to eat my goddamn oh, mozzarella sticks. Yeah, DJ Tiesto is gonna leave you alone. Yeah. yeah, DJ Tiesto is gonna like but at one point though you know that DJ Tiesto is gonna lock eyes with you and there's gonna be some sadness behind those eyes. And you're gonna have to take that know, with you when you go he's far away. From where I was sitting, I was sitting on the second story balcony and I, I felt like he was a tiny man down there with like all these tiny dancers around him. Maybe he was the size and of And I just walked to the pizza place and just ordered uh, two giant pepperoni slices. And it was so good. You'll dude. never believe the amount of ecstasy this man is on. 
ladies and gentlemen. We're going to continue true. this podcast. But before we do, I want to take a break for a word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor, ladies and gentlemen, is Hims, a wellness brand for men. I'm going to throw this out. You've heard us talk about Hims left and right. I'm using it. Andy's using it. Just this morning, I used the shampoo. I took the finasteride, and the night prior, I like to take the vitamins at night. Why? Because I feel like I'm doing something good for myself while I rest. Uh, listen, you might notice that your hair is thinning a little bit, and that's okay. It's easier to do something about it now, though, than it is to wait until it's gone. That's why I would like to recommend to you guys right now, 4 a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. It's time to write a new chapter, one in which you have your hair. Uh, we've been a proud sponsor, of, or a proud advocate of for Hims for a very, very long time, of course, because there's no snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. These are prescription solutions backed by science. Hims was created by a guy who knows some men's health conversations are easier online than in person, which means uh, you do this whole thing online, no more awkward in person person doctors visits or long pharmacy lines for him connects you to real doctors online which could save you hours completely confidential and discreet answer a few quick questions a doctor will review and if they determine it's right for you uh, can prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your door this holiday season let it grow let it grow let it grow with hymns uh dive into 2020 hair first right now my listeners can get started with their first month free go to for hymns.com slash kinda that's for hymns.com slash kinda Prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate, offer valid only, if prescribed uh, three months minimum subscription. Additional re uh, restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash kinda. What are you waiting for? You want to go full bald? Don't do it, brother. Do something now. Next up. We got Butcher Box. Ah, this one's also near and dear to our hearts here because we love steak. And last, ladies and gentlemen, it's steak night. Is, it, is any culinary occasion more delicious? Spoiler alert, absolutely not. Let me tell you, I love grilling a steak. Barrett, I like going out there into the sun, letting the sun hit my beautiful forehead, and just hearing the sound of that meat hit the grill for the first time. You know what I mean? I'm and so, I'm so, you're making me so hungry oh, right now. And then okay. you just sit out there for a little bit. Yeah. And let me tell you, it is a zen moment. Nothing in life can touch me when I'm meditating over a nice, big, juicy slice of steak. And that's why we love Butcher Box. If tenderness is the mark of an excellent steak, one cut is king, and that's the filet mignon. Sure, it is less marbling than a ribeye, but the texture is unbeatable. Still missing the fat? There's nothing uh, like a quick wrap in bacon won't fix. And right now, Butcher Box gives you two filets and a pack of bacon free in your first box. Every month, Butcher Box ships a curated selection of high-quality meat right to my home. Uh, Kevin got one the other day, and I was like, let me have it. And he was like, no. <laughs> uh, all meat is free of antibiotics and, and added hormones. Each box has 9 to 11 pounds of meat, enough for 24 indiv individual meals, uh, packed fresh and shipped frozen and vacuum sealed so it stays that way. It's the best meat shipped right to your door, which means one less trip to the grocers. Options like 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken, heritage pork, wild-caught Alaskan salmon, and bacon that's free of nitrates and added sugar. Barry, we got to just, we got to cook. We got to get out there and start barbecuing, buddy. Uh, ButcherBox is the most affordable and convenient way to get healthy, humanely raised meat. With ButcherBox, you get the highest quality meat around for just $6 per meal. And they even have free shipping nationwide, except for Alaska and Hawaii. You get two, here's the, here's, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. You can get two filet mignons, a pack of bacon, plus $20 off your first box when you sign up now at butcherbox.com slash kinda. Or... Use the promo code KINDA at checkout. That's two free filet mignons, a pack of bacon, plus $20 off your first box. Just go to butcherbox.com slash KINDA or use the promo code KINDA at checkout. And lastly, we got the besties podcast. Hey, listeners, we know you love all things video games, so we want to tell you about a Spotify original podcast called The Besties. Uh, every Friday, the creators of The Adventure Zone, Justin and Griffin, uh, Griffin uh, McElroy, uh, uh, are joined by their two best friends and hardened video game reporters, Russ uh, Frustick and Chris Plant, uh, to go deep on a single new video game. If you've been a fan of Polygon, you know these guys. They co-founded it. Also, we've hung out with them before, and they're, they're cool dudes. Plus, the besties cover all the major moments in video games in 2020, from new console launches to Cyberpunk 2020 and beyond. And at the end of the year, they do complete... Uh, showdown pitting all of the top games of the year against one another to get to the top game of that year. It's pretty epic, but the besties can't do it without their fans who write in each week with all sorts of goofy suggestions. It's like a book club for video games. Uh, you 
can find the besties on Spotify, which also has your favorite podcasts, including this one, of course, and music all for free. Listen to the besties free only on Spotify. And now back to the show. All right. Now we're done with that. Tim. <laughs> yes. You had a tremendous amount of eye surgery lately. <laughs> yeah. A tremendous amount. <laughs> We've been talking about Seven this. Seven different operations. Ad nauseum of how of me going in blind fury, all this stuff. Like, am I going to be blind? I was pretty confident about the whole thing. I was just like, you know, Kev was kind of like freaking me out or trying to freak me out, but I, I wasn't letting it get to me. Oh, I was just like, oh, it's going to be fine. It's just like, what it's, if I caught you? So, it's, it's, it's fine. It's going to be totally fine. The day before, I started freaking out, guys. So I was just like, I, I'm legitimately, legitimately might be blind for the rest of my life. Like, if something goes wrong. And I was like, why am I doing this to myself? And it was like, I've only had this feeling high twice risk, high reward. other times in my life. Jumping out of a fucking plane. I was yeah. going to guess that was one of them. Because, like, seriously, it's like, you're, once you start going up, there's this moment of, like, why am I doing yeah. this? Yeah. And it's like, you when you are looking at you're like, what the fuck am I doing this for? The other one was when I was in Bali and I decided to go on the world's craziest fucking water slide. And I was just like, up there and I'm like, I'm next. And I'm like, why? Yeah, <laughs> like, I should have said no. <laughs> why? You of know? all places to go yeah. on the world's craziest exactly. water slide. Exactly. Bali would not be the one. Yeah. So... <laughs> I literally went on a water slide. There was a fucking 90 degree drop into a loop. Jesus. <laughs> That's a loop. What That's the fuck terrifying. was I thinking? It was so fun, though. But then this other time, I'm like, yeah, great. I'm going to get the lasers in my eyes. Like, that sounds like a fucking good time. I was so fucking scared. And so I, I go, and it was totally fucking fine. Everything worked out great. Um, but the thing that I thought was a little bit bizarre is, uh, you know, they're prepping me. They're trying to keep me all calm and stuff. And I'm like, it's cool. It's cool. I'm definitely trying to overplay. Like how confident I am, I was not at all. Right. You're like, we're like, more like a leather jacket. And stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, like, do they hey. put you out for this? <laughs> no. Oh wow. No, they don't put you out. You s- oh. and think of it this way: you see it all happen because oh, wow. your oh. eyes oh. are open. Nope. No. Jesus. Yeah. So, so how do you blink? So you, you, they put you drops in your eyes, right? So so here's the thing. So I'm I'm like in this room and they're like they're prepping me, and dude, these motherfuckers straight up leave me like I from the waiting room like Tim Gettys cool come back and I'm like cool and I go back they do some quick check on me they put the drops in there like, right, we'll be right back they leave me in this fucking like room alone for 15 minutes with your thoughts with my goddamn <laughs> thoughts all right that like, is like what the fuck is wrong with that uh, was it like this at all yeah yeah, real time. Damn. How about you just Google fire in the sky? Let's have some uh, nightmares right now. I hate this. I hate anything Let's to do fire with Fire in the sky eyeballs. Let's have some oh, nightmares. No, oh, this man. scene was even worse. Yeah. That's the one where they like pry his eyes open and make him watch stuff. And then they like, just put drops in periodically so they don't come out. It's terrifying. Oh. Give me give me one sec. Keep fill time. Fill time. I, I'll never forget my, my wife had to go in for a minor surgery where they were they were putting her out and she was a little bit nervous. She had to have some uh like her, her elbow worked on. And uh I was like, you know, I'm there. I'm like, this is what you're when you get married, uh, you know, as a, as a good husband, you look for those opportunities to like be there for your wife. I'm like, this is an opportunity for me to step up. This is a win. Like, this, this is I'm, I'm like an easy, easy win for me. I hold her hand. I make I crack some jokes. What I'm good at diffuse tension and it's going to be good. Right. She's a little bit nervous. But to be honest, I think I was a little bit more of a nervous wreck than she was because I'm like, oh, my God, if she dies, I have to like I, I will not be able to live. Um, and then and, and then everything was like we were getting to the point where it was a little tense. And then. Her anesthesiologist walked in, and he was the best looking man I've ever seen in my <laughs> of life. Course. And I saw, and I, I mean, and watch my gaze, okay? Up to it. <laughs> <laughs> because he was a solid six foot two. Yeah. Just more hair than any man should have, and a beard that was like better kept, but more rugged than mine. Wow. And he wow. says so one thing. Better kept wow. more rugged. <laughs> he says one little tiny thing to my wife, and she does the laugh. And everyone knows the laugh. You know, it's not like, a, <laughs> it's funny. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of laugh and I'm like should I leave do I need to be here should I leave the room you anyway, comfortable shut, you're, shut in, you're, totally. in, you're insecurities I was just like, uh, like my wife's like go get me a go get me why don't you just leave yeah I said yeah, assets I'm, a couple I'm, things I'm working on it right now cool. it's being weird so I'm in this fucking room I, I want the, the picture of the mirror I'm in this room and I'm freaking the fuck out. It's like the final 15 minutes before what I what is this be psycho forever. fucking true detective room that this got you this is the room I'm in alright so, so check this out, guys. They put these numbing drops in my eyes, which I've had before from them. So I'm like, I was familiar with what's going on. I'm like, yeah. cool, my eyes are going to be totally numb. That's fine. But I'm sitting there, 15 minutes, just chilling in my own head. And I look, and I'm sitting on a stool. Like, you see where that stool is right there? I'm sitting on one where I took this picture from. And I'm looking straight ahead of me at a mirror. Now, what's weird about this? Oh, there's is no mirror in it. I'm not there. Wait, what? <laughs> So you see this fucking Tim, are you it's, a like it's like off level or whatever. And it's like I, oh. you guys, 
I started freaking the fuck out. I was like, yo, they just put numbing shit. Like, they didn't drug me. Like, I was like, what the fuck? And I started moving around looking at this thing. And I was like, like, really fucking getting scared. And I like, I looked back and it was like, it was just a level thing. Like, it was higher than me. So what is it reflecting? So like, it's reflecting on the, the back wall. There was there's just a white square. Why? It's like above what me. What kind it's, of fucking it's, like it's how they amusement do park bullshit is this? The projector that has the letters. Oh, and like okay. apparently they do it backwards, and like that's how they they. they oh. You're looking at a mirror, I guess. Oh, is, okay. yeah. But I was like freaking out because I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Am I a ghost? This is crazy. Oh, they should have made it like an LED screen to make it look like the wall, and then just have like stuff pop Holy up. Shit. And stuff. It, you, did you guys ever watch um, that '70s show? Yeah. You know when they get high and like the parents will be talking about the wallpaper will be moving in the background? <laughs> yeah. That's what this reminds me of. So I was shooting balls. That had me freaking out. And then eventually I realized I was like, all right, I need to calm the fuck down. So I go in to, to do the surgery and they like, they, they put me down. Oh, before I go in, the guy comes in, some random kid that I hadn't seen yet. And he's just like, hey, so uh, it's time to go. Um, leave everything in here. But you can take your phone if you want to take a picture with the doctor afterwards. I was like, what? yeah, I do. What the fuck? He know, he know, they know you, Tim. They know. But I was like, this is like, <laughs> like, do you follow me? Like, what do you think you are? You my, know. My favorite thing was you posted that picture. Yeah. And then Gia responded because you were like, dude, shout out to this guy. He's like my yeah. savior and did an awesome job. And he's there for me. He's always there for me. And Gia responded like, what am I, chopped liver? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I didn't mention her at all. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it was just like, and he, he is a Bay Area legend. Like, if you listen to the radio ever, like there's. Like Scott <laughs> Hyber, like V as in Vision, it's this whole fucking thing. V right? as in Vision, that's dope. Like, he's just on the radio forever. But I'm just like, why are you treating him like a celebrity? It was a weird, weird thing. Where I'm like, don't take anything with you, but you take you can take your phone to take a picture with him. I'm like, hell yeah, bro. All right, whatever. yeah, like you were like you were Kim Kardashian with uh, like the famous nose job yeah. guy or whatever. So jumping ahead a little bit after the surgery. I like try to get the picture, and he acted like that was weird as fuck. Uh, <laughs> they set you up for that. Shit. I was like, "The fuck, that's whatever, sucks. I don't care." That's funny. But but yeah, what, so you're never gonna have to get the eyes done again, so you're good. Fuck this guy. Yeah. So uh, so I, I go down. Yeah, for the Just surgery, kidding, Dr. I'll B. spare too many of the details here. Horrifying. But the whole thing over in ten minutes, it felt like twenty minutes. Really? Like that uh, fast? Yeah, dude. It's like huh. you just boom, boom, boom. Is like, it painful during? It's not painful at all. Um, okay. It's stressful. It's really stressful. So you go down, and they straight up clockwork orange you. Nope. Like they straight up clamp your eyes down. Oh no! no way. So it's like you can't you, you can't close your eyes. You're looking at this shit. You're looking at everything freak going out. on. I would freak And like this part, they I'm not numb gonna, your body. You see like a tongue. Like <laughs> parts I'm not going to tell you because like, as it's you're starting to go in and it's like take his pants off. But uh, wait, so, wait, wait, what, what? Uh, it's. I mean, I'll tell you one word it involves, and then I'll stop talking about okay. it. That word is scraping. Oh. So, oh. Oh. so this fucking laser starts okay. going, and you see a red like, So there's a red dot, and then there's like two green dots on the sides. And it's just lights. It's Star just Wars. lights and stuff. And, and I'm just like, like looking at it, and he's like, okay, focus on the green. Follow the green. Like, you know, like. That's all you got to do. It's like, look at this shit. Like, don't worry You're about like, what I got to move my eyes? Am I going to fucking do the work here? Or and I'm like, like, right, refill so my own drink? I'm like, following this shit along or whatever. And it was just the most insane moment I've ever had in my life. It was a legit moment of clarity where everything was blurry as fuck. It's like, there was just like, it looked like water. So it's like, you can't really see. But then all of a sudden, I was looking at the green light and it just went. And it was just like, I could see every like fingerprint, like every huh. like, like every diode of light you from the a light. Vampire. And I was just like, oh, oh my God. Like, it was the most perfect vision possible. And then it just went away. And I'm like, well, that sucks. I want that back. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's the good but, drug. But so then that was the laser turning on. <laughs> the laser turns on and you hear it. And motherfuckers, guys. You smell Like it, it didn't hurt at all. Hmm. But the fear of just hearing. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. It starts going. And then, yeah, Nick, you start smelling it. You start Aww. smelling your eyes. A little smelly eye burning. And I was just like freaking the fuck out. But there was over. I was like, cool. Oh, my God. I would not be able to handle that. I would yeah. freak out and leave. And then it would shoot a fucking laser through my head. And it would kill me. Yeah. It would like lobotomize me. Yeah. It was, uh, it was a lot. But then then the, like, I told the whole process already. But like, you didn't it, get LASIK, right? You got the other thing? PRK. PRK. Yeah. So uh, PRK means longer recovery time, um, which essentially means like five days of hell. And God, guys, this weekend was not fun. No. Imagine if your eyelids were sandpaper. It's just oh. like, uh, so that fucking sucks. Yeah, can you bring this up? <laughs> the other ones? Yeah, hold on. So that's how you had to sleep? Yeah. 
Because yeah. you were light sensitive? So so here's the thing. <laughs> My eyes are watering just looking so at you. So I had to wear yeah. these dumbass tracer goggles. These are awesome. Go back to the goggle one. Andy likes these because it's like his yeah, favorite that game, look like tracer. Overwatch. Yeah, so you can see how fucked my eyes are there. Like, it felt like sandpaper. Your pupils are tiny. And you just can't see anything. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was fucking hell, and I'm useless, and I can't look at a screen. And it's like, you know when you were a little kid and a power outage would happen, and you're just like... Oh, like, do? fuck, this is the worst thing ever. At least I have my Game Boy until the batteries die. It's like that, except it's like, oh, hey, it's five days. You, your eyes are going to suck. It's going to hurt really bad, and you can't do anything. You can't go to work. You can't do anything like you need to do. You also can't do anything you want to do. And I'm just like, this couldn't, is the fucking uh, worst thing. Couldn't do your hair there either, huh? No. Couldn't fucking see shit. <laughs> you kidding me? But then, yeah, go, go to the little bra. That blonde hair, man. It's crazy. Look at that. So they gave me fucking a bra that I had to put over that's these a good, That's a solid C cup right so there. Right there. <laughs> to, like, block the... Because the, the light was... It's so, so ridiculously, yeah. like, oh. sensitive to light. My I God. wasn't expecting... I, I was expecting be... to get to work and you not be here today. I, I me thought... too. I actually recovered faster, like, than, than the wow. schedule, which is... Impressive because they design. underestimated you. I mean, I yeah, we, than we than were prepared for anything this morning. Kevin was telling me, he's like, hey, uh, it doesn't seem like he's going to know until 10. So we had like three different sets of lower thirds for in review prepared because yeah, yeah, yeah. like Kevin was in and out. And so, yeah, well, crazy. here I am. It's great. So now it's a weird thing where my eyes are, are good. I can see better than I've ever seen before, but everything is not in focus. Uh, and like over the next couple months, it's just going to get better and better until eventually again. I'm 2020, which is freaking cool as hell to think about. But, man, this weekend, it's just like you guys don't understand, like, how hard it is. Like, you're just useless when you can't see, when oh, yeah. you're used to seeing, you know? I would be, I would annoy the shit out of my wife with how many times I grabbed her. That would I, just be I couldn't I even do. find you. You know what I mean? I'd be like. <laughs> but, like, you called me during touch. the, the um, Oscar. Oscars. Oscar stream. And, like, my, I heard my phone. I'm just like, fuck. Like, it's in yeah. the bed somewhere, and I can't find it. Like, it's, you just feel useless, man. And then over time, so I started listening to audiobooks, and I listened to the uh, Star Wars. Uh, the Thrawn. Timothy's on. Yeah, and yeah. I, I finished the first one. Um, and it's just so crazy. Have you guys ever listened to audiobooks? Mm-hmm. No. I They're tried fun. one time. Yeah. It didn't work it, out. It's cool. And I, it was a lot of fun. There's a lot of sound effects, and there's music, yeah. and he does all the voices and shit. It's pretty cool. Uh, he needs to work on his Leia, though. But um, the I'm listening, and then I realize you can do like two times speed, like three times speed, or whatever. And it's like, I tried that. I'm like, how the fuck did anyone listen like this? Like it's way too like this is like not listenable. Mm-hmm. But then over time, I'm like they're talking way too slow, and I would start like going faster and faster. And then I realized like I'm at like three times speed right now. What? And, like, I'm That's blazing through. Much. But I really I could only work up to it. You know, you if you go in at three, in. it's yeah. like it's way too yeah. much. But like if you start off, you can get a little faster and faster. It's a pro tip at home. We're not sponsored by Audible, but one day we will be again, and then. That's the, the pro tip of the day. Audible's the bomb, dude. We used to, I remember when, I, when we used to drive to Laughlin, Nevada. We drove to Arizona. That was like the farthest my, my parents would ever put me in a car and drive me to. Laughlin and Arizona. Laughlin's like five hours away from Riverside where I grew up, but Arizona's like eight. And we would go to visit my aunt and uncle, and every time I would like, at first I would fight it, but then I would slowly get into it. We, my dad loved listening to the Tom Clancy books. So we would listen to like Claire and Present Danger, Hunt for October, all these books. And man, there's something about that like long drive, but just hearing them do like the voices and getting the characters, that was really, really cool. It is, it's very cool. It's one dude and he does all the voices from Star Wars. And yeah. it's like he does Han Solo. Like, you sound pretty good. He does Chewie, does C three PO and stuff. I'm like, whoa, this is fucking this is dope. It's real dope shit. Timothy Zahn. Yeah. yeah. So Timothy Zahn was the he wrote I don't know how many of the Star Wars books he wrote. He wrote uh, a whole bunch of them, bunch. but he's it's iconic for a trilogy yeah. that like a lot of people regard as the true episode seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Of like oh, at least wow. before yeah, all this stuff, but like back when that shit was as canon as it ever was. Yeah, he introduced the I think the Mara Jade character was his creation. Mara Jade, and Thrawn, Thrawn, Grand Admiral Thrawn, and then of course I think Leia was pregnant with twins at this point. It's like, fantastic. Yeah. And stuff. Luke had started I think a Jedi Academy. No, I mean, at least not yet. Not so. yet. I think at some point he does. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm very hands at it. So, but here's the other thing though. Over days, right? I'm dealing with this, and it's like some days I can see better than others, but like I still couldn't go outside or whatever. So there was a lot of time of just me laying in bed, like oh, I ran out of things to do or watch. How did food taste? Food was food was great. Yeah. Now, okay, here here's the story. Do you hear Wait, did your other senses enhance? So here's the story. Oh, let's guys, go. Right. So I get this call from Nick, and I can't fucking find it. So it's like even though I could hear the vibration, like you know, my sense of touch and my yeah. sense of whatever, not working. Were you watching all... the Academy Awards at this point or no? No, I couldn't. He was okay. hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard him though. Heard he him heard him from good. Los Angeles live. Like he wasn't. Yeah, he was hearing here. got that guy. Daredevil. Yeah. He was crazy. I'm gonna get in trouble for telling the story, but yeah. I'm gonna do it anyways. I'm gonna do it anyways. Do it, oh, do it. Fran already does own it. I get in trouble with it's, who though? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm laying there. I'm just like, you farted, <laughs> and she was just like, 
she got so mad because she's just like she literally was like it was like the middle of the night and it's like it's so rare that I catch her farting so <laughs> fucking rare but like I didn't hear it I just smelled it yeah. and I called her out and she was like your fucking senses are getting better and I was like no they're not they're just like, you just farted yeah, just but she got so happened. legitimately angry as if my senses were getting better isn't that the best isn't it the best when you catch him doing that stuff doing uh, that stuff God, I love it. <laughs> it's like I, I, mean, I don't like to generalize okay mm-hmm. it was Obviously, like us this morning with Baird and the kimchi. <laughs> oh, oh, we were all blaming each other, man. <laughs> we we're at this table, and like all of a sudden, it smells like just hell. Dude, legit, I was in the other room looking at Cool Greg, like, bro, what are you doing over there? <laughs> there is something so gratifying. Because, like, I, I, everyone's different, obviously. Like, if you think farts are funny and you're a female, disregard the statement. But it's been my experience that for the most part, guys think farts are way funnier than women. And I, in my relationship, that dynamic is very traditional between me and my wife. I think it's hilarious. I have no shame about it whatsoever. My wife fucking hates it. Fucking hates it. So whenever there's an accidental slip on that part, it's the it's the best. It is the yeah. best in my perspective. <laughs> Am I wrong? Oh no, you're. I, I mean, we've talked about this before, but like, I love farting in response to Gia's questions, uh, especially. <laughs> she doesn't like it one bit, but then what she likes, what she likes even less, <laughs> she likes even less is when I immediately follow it up with, uh, "I'm not farting at you. I'm farting with you." <laughs> she does not like. I it. do the old. There must be a, there must be a mongoose in the next room. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, see, my that's super old school because my dad was like Fonzie. Like, uh, he was like, oh, Fon- hey. Fonzie just drove down the just drove down the street because it was always like motorcycle. a motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, that's what it always was. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but I, the, the one thing that I want to tell the story I want to tell about this is, uh, so at some point I was just laying in bed and like I could kind of see enough, but like I couldn't watch anything of substance. Like I couldn't like watch a movie. Like I, I tried watching Wonder Woman at that point, but I, I, my eyes weren't there yet. Everything was just too whatever. boring. Yeah. So I'm like, I just need to, <laughs> I just need to turn on <laughs> some something that's just mindless, whatever. Now, Nick, I've been pitching you on this damn YouTube channel on internet. Explorers for the last couple weeks. Which one? It's not the Dobre Brothers. Oh, guys, it is then. Mr. Beast. Okay. And it's what oh, he's yeah. so fucking popular. It's one of those things where I feel that this Mr. Beast dude and his channel is the perfect example that not every major huge YouTube channel needs to be total dog shit garbage. Like the this, Dobre Brothers. This dude, exactly. This dude is just a positive force for the world. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there might be stuff I don't know. There might be some deep dark se- secrets. Shout out, like, shit shout out really bad. quick to the homies, Carl, Car- Carl and, Jordan. and Jordan. Motherfucking who, Carl. Yeah. Who, uh, a best friend, Carl. Yeah. This little shit, dude. Like, I, I don't know him well enough that, to call him a little fast. shit. That he, turned he, real he came quick. to, like, the SF meet and greet he, he last came, year. He came to yeah. prom. And, like, yeah. dude. He's been at OKB stream. He's still yeah. He is awesome, and like shit. when you see him, Nick, when you see him, he is the future. You look at this is kid, he? and you're just like, like Carl's just legitimately like, one of the funniest people I know. He's like, so he's funny, my funniest and friend by far. I'm so I jealous don't of him. Like it, I'm so jealous of him. But I like, like, he it. just pops up in these videos every once in a while, and I'm just like, <laughs> it's the funniest thing seeing him because I'm just like, you, you <laughs> got that it factor, he, man. He's got like the very specific humor shit that like you just you can't explain it, but you're like, wow. I, I mean he's this, like, I mean this in the the most complimentary way. He's TikTok as a human. No, oh. yeah. yeah, like it's 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 <laughs> yeah. meme humor, but not annoying. Like, yeah, because I for a, a lot of the time when I hear people like use meme humor over the top, like over and over again, I'm like, you all right. meme, meme, okay, yeah, a mean, uh, meme, like internet humor. Sure, right? sure, I'm sure, like, sure. all right, guys, like let's calm down. Like we don't have to, we had, we don't have to do this over and over and over again. For him, he's so authentic with it and so great with it that it just works I, I just fucking love it and when he pops up in these videos it just it just warms my he's god he's so funny he's but like Nick, a cartoon character so i've been i've been telling what you is, what is the channel called again? Mr. Beast mr beast is beast. his name and if there's bad stuff don't fucking tell me i don't want to know i want to <laughs> just believe that let, him get, let him get i want to believe own time. he's pure good sure uh because literally all he does is he got a lot of views i don't know how he has to start but like he gets so many youtube views and he makes so much money that all he does is spend that money to make more videos to get more money and he spends his money in awesome ways it's just like kfa exactly. <laughs> kind of yeah. it's kind of like that but like he's the guy that will do the challenges where it's like i'm gonna buy a tesla and there's four people in the no, tesla they gotta keep their hand on it or whatever uh, whoever leaves the tesla last gets to I keep the shit tesla in the tesla and it's just like I, I turned on one of these things and then it was just like hours later and i'm still watching it there's just something about him but they're just they're so fascinating like to see he bought human a whole beings. like grocery store he bought uh, everything inside of a grocery store and then fans came and lined up and like all right you could just take whatever you want and like people were just lining up to walk into the grocery store and just take food that they wanted and groceries and shit it's i would crazy. take all the pop tarts so i watched i watched one yesterday that was it was him and like three of his friends 
and he got three Lambos and he put his friends in the Lambos and he set up a race with the Lambos. But there was all these rules where it's like, you got to stay under speed limit in the Lambos and you had to go to challenge points and pick up an envelope and the envelope would be like, Road rules. Go, go to a, a football field and kick a field goal. And then they would do that. And then they have to get back in the car, go to the next thing. And it's like, get a hole in one in a mini golf place. Like, go pick up these items from a grocery store. But like, he did it in a way that like one of the items in the grocery store he knew wasn't at that grocery store. Mm -hmm. So people, they, they spent hella time looking for the shit. Then you had to go to a different grocery store to get that last, the cheese puffs or whatever the fuck. And you're just watching this. And it's just like, this shouldn't be entertaining. But they, the editing's so fucking great. And these kids, Whoever whoever wins gets a Lambo. That's amazing. And it's like, then it ends. This motherfucker gets a Lambo. It's just like, what the hell? He gave away a million dollars. There was a million dollars in a, uh, the fucking cube. And you can see it. And there's four people with their hand on it. Last person to take their hand off gets a million dollars. So what, how did people... Three of them died. Did people just go, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how the fuck, you would have to fight my hand off. You see human beings off. fucking break, man. Like, they're just there. And it's, like, it's been like 42 hours. And they're just like... And like people will come and try to like convince them and like bribe them to leave. Like if you leave it's now, like torture. I'll give you 10k and a PS4 <laughs> and a PS4. Yeah, it's like the most weird things. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, I, it's it's honestly it's so fucking fascinating. It, it to, hits that like like uh, very fascinating mid 2000s daytime TV challenge. Yeah, shit, yeah you yeah. know where you're just like. It, like there's just something about this and like how they introduce this idea of these challenges that you're just like I gotta see how people react so to this shit it, it's honestly it's brilliant like they just keep coming up with ideas that make me want to be like I guess I gotta watch the next one after that one I watched one where him and his friends would go to a mall walk into a store and hand random people his credit card and just say you can buy whatever you want but if you go over the limit you don't get anything they don't, oh, know, what the they don't know what the limit is. Yeah. They don't know what oh, the limit is. Oh, man. The limit was a million dollars. You're kidding me. So you see these people fucking wrestling, and they're all egging them on, like, you sure you want to go that high? Or you can go a lot higher. And, like, they would go to a bunch of different stores, and, like, it started off at just, like, a GameStop or whatever, and, like, a Lego store or whatever. It ends at, like, a jewelry shop. <laughs> And there's dudes buying diamonds. Like hell yeah, shit's fucking crazy. That's man. insane. And then every once in a while, Carl's just in the videos. Yeah, <laughs> it's just the fucking funny. Well, because I think I think he started off um, on the brothers channel doing like editing and, and showed yeah. up on the brothers channel. I think if it's like Mr. Bro or something like that. Yeah, like yeah, or brother. I, I forgot the name yeah. of it. Anyway, it's Mr. Beast's brother who has also has his own channel, and I guess he just worked up the ranks, pulled yeah. up his bootstraps, you know. And like Jordan is editing videos now. Like I think Jordan. Jordan's first edited video was the one where it was the camp challenge where they're all like uh, Boy Scouts for a day. Wait, which Jordan is this? Jordan this, Town. Uh, Jordan, Jordan Town. Town. No yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah he's he a started, former started Game Over Greggy show yeah. alumni. Yeah. Mr. Jordan Bro, Town. Yeah, so oh, really? Yeah. yeah, he was on the show during KFL. One? Three. No, three. Two. two. I think it was three. Four. Really? Fuck, I don't I um, but yeah, he uh, that was his first video, I think, that he had edited. And I checked it out. I was like, shit, this is like Dude, really good, fun, man. Shout out oh, to those we'll kids. Have to go check. That you really out. should, Nick. Yeah. You're not gonna, but you really Probably should. Probably not. I don't like when people make each other do horrible things, <laughs> unless it's me making you guys do horrible things on KFAF tomorrow, 11:30. Twitch.tv/slash Kind of Funny Games. Watch it live. Are we uh, doing something? What's that? Oh, we got. We better figure something out. <laughs> yeah, we made Joey take that stupid blanket home. We should have just kept it. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, you all came out and supported us so lovingly last month that. It's time to give back by answering some of your questions that you submitted over on patreon.com slash kind of funny. Thank you uh, to Grant Burton for asking us this question. He said, what's the longest con slash lie you think you could get away with? Or what's the biggest or longest con slash lie you have gotten away with? Oh, <laughs> man. I can't tell you because it's still going on. Damn. Uh, Tim's not even Tim. <laughs> Tim's been <laughs> Gia the whole time. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> hmm. um, I think I can last a real long time. You would last out of all of us. Greg would break first. I think Greg would break. Actually, I would break first. I can't lie. I can't even take part of this. Greg, I think. Here's what would happen, I think. Greg would do his, but it would take so long that no one would care about it, and then he'd forget that he was supposed to be doing it. Yeah. Yours would be a long time, but it would somehow make us money in like a legal, legit way. Mostly. But I don't know what it would be. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. What's the longest you have gotten away with, though? The I, longest I, I got away know. with anything was that prank we played on Greg, where it was like two <laughs> days it took me to do that, and everyone in the office had to be cool about it. 
And that fucking snitch Joey almost let it out. Almost let you it know? out. But we fi- we did it and we got him and it's the best prank video anyone's ever done on anyone. And the look on his stupid face. <laughs> <laughs> the longest lie I've gotten away with, uh, like this was back in high school, because you're a dumb high school kid, you're trying to impress girls. I used to tell people that I was a year older than I actually was. And I did that <laughs> shit for like five years. Why? Just I don't know, because again, I was a dumb high school kid. Yeah, that's kind of stupid. Again, this was fuckboy bear age, where he's just trying to do anything to have sex with girls. So <laughs> <laughs> that's <Wow>. fair. <laughs> Uh, the only time, the only time I find myself ha- like in that situation is when I think it's going to be beneficial for someone. So like throwing your thirtieth party, but it didn't require me lying, but it required us to be secretive, and it yeah. almost killed me. Yeah, mostly because I wanted your opinion on the banner that I was making. Yeah, for you, which is a weird thing because now I have this banner and I need to decide: Just do I need out. to keep it no. or do I throw, throw it, it away? Out. It's a banner throw. that says Tim Getty's thirtieth birthday roast, and I'm like, it's kind of dope. But I, I'm I, never I going to t- reuse yeah, it. Yeah, that's throw my thing. Out. I have the file. If you ever want to print it again, yeah, it was like right. fifty bucks. Yeah. Reuse it for the thirty fifth. Or yeah, like number cross five it out. It could be just something cool to for keep in the the new studio, you know, just like have it as like a it's, we got too much. That could be cool. Yeah. Yeah. We have enough shit. We have enough. shit. Like literally, <laughs> uh, if we don't have enough shit to put in the new studio, wait a week. Yeah, that room back there is fucking ridiculous right now. So I'm not gonna point fingers, but someone in the room right next door has not one but two giant boxes, and I can't remember what they were. Blessing. But they were like, <laughs> I was like, why do you need two of these? Why do you need two of these fucking? I don't know items? why I got two of them. Like it's essentially, it's basically the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot collector's, collector's edition because one of them was PS4 and one of them was Xbox. Yeah, one of them is PS4 and one of them is Xbox, and I'm like, I don't even, I don't know if I want one of these, let alone two of them. God, it's the worst. Um, it's great though. I uh, I told him everybody my uncle worked at Nintendo. How did long did really? that last? <laughs> no, I, no. Didn't, I didn't really do that. But uh, we all we, we all we that. all lied about dumb shit when we were kids. Yeah, that's like, why I'm trying to think. I'm like, what was something stupid that I lied about that I would have? Oh, you know what? So in middle school, uh, I lived in Nigeria um, because my dad lived ni- lived in Nigeria at the time. So I was going to boarding school, and for like a good two years, I made everything everybody think that I just did something terrible to get sent to Nigeria. Uh, That's fucking rad. Yeah. So I was like, oh yeah, I got in a huge fight. I stabbed a guy. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. Did twelve years old. Did anyone believe that? Everybody believed it. Wow. Yeah, because everybody's like, but my friend back in the states, Justin Timberlake. My <laughs> 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 good friend, do you know him? You ever heard of him? Yeah, it was one of those things where I was like the, one of the only Americans in school, and so everybody was like, "Oh, he's different," and I was like, "Oh yeah, I've done bad things to get here." And also, a lot of the British kids that were there did bad things <laughs> to get to end up there, which is why I was able to kind of fit in Blend with them. Yeah, you yeah. the know, they could have been lying too. I was like, uh, I remember when I was a kid, I was so scared of roller coasters and going on any exciting theme park rides. I don't know why, because I fucking love them now. But back then, I was so terrified of them. And uh, we were going to Fiesta, Texas, Six Flags Fiesta, Texas in San Antonio. And uh, all my friends wanted to go on the Joker's Revenge. And it's like this roller coaster that goes forward and then it comes backwards all the way. And I was like way too scared to ride this ride. Uh, But I told my friend Jacob, I was like, Dude, I, it's just I love these rides so much that like my brother dared me. He was like, "I bet you money you won't be able to not ride that ride." And I that's was like, the lamest. And thing. I was like, "That's <laughs> what am I gonna do?" Yeah, I was like, "I guess I can't." My, Fuck him. My brother told me he was gonna give me money if I like could resist going on my favorite theme park rides. So, oh like, my I can't. god, that is such an Because I was just so ass. scared, <laughs> dude. The, 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 thinking about this, I. It's just little kid logic. Like, it is. What is it, sense. Tim? What's it going to be, Tim? I mean, it's just a thing where I'm like, what? Look, statute look, of limitations, bro. Can't I mean, hold it so here's you, the deal. Here is 20 the years, deal. you know what I mean? There, There is one thing that I did a long time ago in high school that kind of fucked over one of my really good friends. And <laughs> I thought it was funny. Kind of. And you know what? It was funny. It really was funny. I can't tell it because to this day. They still don't know. Okay. Oh, I was oh. the one behind. Oh, is it wow. James Burke? It is James Burke. You <laughs> fucked him with James Burke. <laughs> because James Burke is such a gullible oak oh, that, of course, god. you fucked him oh, over. Oh, my god. What did you, you got to tell the story. I can't. I can't. What does it involve? I just can't. You can't, Nick. I can't. <laughs> like he doesn't know, do he'll never know. <laughs> oh. But but there is another version of that story, though, also involving James. Not that story, but like a similar thing. where And I've told this before. Sometime Game Over Grady show, whatever. I'm pretty hazy on the details of this because it was a long time ago. But there was there was pretty girls in high school. That's what happens, right? You're in high school. You like these pretty girls, whatever. This one kid, Carlito, <laughs> had a crush on this girl, and he thought 
that it would be he was too scared to talk to the girl himself. So he wanted to use yeah, the show James, the way. James Burke. James Burke's MySpace profile to talk to her. Okay. And that's he, not confusing at all. I, dude, it was the dumbest plan ever. We weren't even that cool with this kid. Like, and he just like was talking to you, like, hey James, like, I've seen that she's like talked to you before. So it's like I, that, I feel like that's my end. And James was like, what the fuck are you talking about? This kid sneaks on like James was logged in on like the library on his mm, MySpace. Dumbass. And this fucking kid starts messaging this girl using James's profile. Oh god. So and says such stupid like the type of shit that you're like oh, Tim was that kid no yeah. I wasn't I was not that kid I was uh, this Carlito is a real person that exists cool name Carlito. and this mother- <laughs> no that I know that because that's the point of this story is this motherfucker he's, he didn't know how to flirt he didn't know what he was doing he, like he was saying things like you really arouse me it's like don't Jesus. that's not it that's it. and it's, it's like when James Greg Burke's tries to talk fucking dirty. MySpace all right like just imagine that fucking face <laughs> hearing these things and Dude, we go to school bro. together it's like there's no way we're not running into these girls every day, yeah. right? So fucking awkward, but I'll never forget it. Carlito cop to it. And it was me and James hanging out at lunch, and Carlito comes up to us, and he goes, Tim and James, Carlito did something bad. <laughs> <laughs> he preferred himself to the third person. <laughs> and I was dying. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, oh. Oh, you're not going to like what Carlito did? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carlito's so bad. He has to refer to himself in the third party. And he just kept doing it. And it was so fucking... And James was like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, I, like, I used your MySpace, man. You stayed. It was your your fault. I told you I was going to do it. You shouldn't have stayed up the thing. And I was like, yeah, that's a point, James. <laughs> yeah, that's a point. But I'll never fucking forget. Carlito did something bad. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be the headline of this video. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. So much for joining us today on the Kind of Funny Podcast. Greg will return next week. I'm sure he's not going to stay in Vegas forever. Guys, you did a phenomenal job today. Remember, if you're listening to this on audio podcast services, please uh, give us, a, give us a, a good ranking there. And come over and check out our YouTube channel and subscribe to us over on YouTube.com uh, slash Kind of Funny. If you had a Carlito in your life, let us know in the comments below what, how he fucked you over. And if you know his Carlito, let me know. Let me know what's <laughs> up with that Carlito. Uh, we'll be back next week, of course, if you're a Patreon uh, producer or your Patreon supporter. You're in for one hell of a post show coming up next. Wow.